Ladies and gentlemen, Conway and Whitman. Studs. Studs. All right, welcome everybody. It is the Studs. Conway and Whitman Show. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. Tim Conway Jr. and Brian Studs. David Whitman. Nice to see you, dude. Ah, Timmy, Studs. man. Look at you, man. Yeah. Studs. Let's bring in uh, Norm MacDonald and Sam Studs. Simon. They're sitting around here. Jesus, look at that, dude. A big yeah. celebrity. Norm MacDonald, man. I don't, I don't know how we do it. Wait, well, let's turn uh, your microphone on there. There you go. I don't know how we do it with the big celebrities. But yeah, look at that. There they come, man. Look at Norm MacDonald and Sam Simon. Sammy, look at you, man. Um, it is uh, Friday, gang, and uh, we'll have um, open phones a little later on, and uh, certainly uh, probably uh, you know toy with uh, Make Like His Laugh, but first... Sammy, Sam Simon and Norm McDonald, dude. Look at that. Look at you. Hey, look at Sam. Look at that, man. Hey, turn the mics on there. There we go. What are you guys doing tooling around the neighborhood, huh? You guys talk there? It's radio, man. There you go. What's with these Jesus. cans? <laughs> Sam, I like your jacket. Let me start with that. I like, like that? I like to do. Oh, touch it. He touch puts it. his arm out for me to touch, touch it. it. Yeah. This is $12,000. Oh, Wait a minute. That jacket's twelve grand. No, no. How much is that See, jacket? I believed it. All right. Sam Simon is worth one hundred and fifty million plus, and uh, Norm Macdonald doesn't drive. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> between uh, the two of them. Yeah. Be, be, between the two of them, man. It's a lot of money for car insurance. <laughs> Sometimes I feel as useless as the parking space at Norm's uh, apartment building. <laughs> yeah. What do you do with the parking spot at your apartment? I give it to my neighbor, and then he gave me a, um, a big thing of cheese and a thing of wine. <laughs> For Christmas, but I don't drink. <laughs> you don't drink at all? No. So who'd you give the wine to? I just leave it in my fridge, and if anyone wants to drink it, they can drink it. And what about the cheese? <laughs> I hate it. You ate the cheese? <laughs> <laughs> a low-end uh, night there, huh? So you gave away your parking space and really got nothing uh, nothing that you would want in return. No, but I would. I was. Uh, I wasn't using it anyways. But but uh, you did eat the cheese, right? Yeah, I ate okay. all the cheese. But how much cheese... Because parking is expensive. You're in Beverly Hills, right? Yeah, I guess it was. It was no. It wasn't. The cheese wasn't like in. Uh, uh, like he wasn't re It's Like Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> <laughs> but did he that give you like twelve hundred dollars worth what? of cheese? You traded uh, your parking <laughs> space for some cheese. For cheese. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm, I might get that MRI. Oh, get the open one. Yeah. Get the non-invasive open one. Now, are you uh, you're a lunatic? I mean, they're like uh, women here, where you think you're dying, you always think you got something terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what do you think you have now? I don't. I was just worried because Ryan was talking about his, his, something wrong with his brain and stuff. And well, stuff. you know, I um, I did uh, today get the MRI, Tim. I know everybody's right. The full body MRI, the 3D? Well, no, not 3D. This is just a brochure for another service they offer where you can get your full body scanned. Right. And uh, you might have pancreatic tumors or abdominal tumors or cholesterol. But the nice thing you is, is look, you, you see the, the pancreatic tumor and, and you see them with three dimensions. <laughs> right. See, uh, right. They, they, it's not just a flat. Uh, it's right. It's like Star Wars. It's like it's like a like a moon material, Earth material. It's just they float out in front of you. That pancreatic. pancreatic will take you out in about two days. Yeah, yeah but isn't the rule of thumb once you can see your pancreas through your through a sweater, then that's the time to <laughs> have it looked at? Well, I had I had what they call the open MRI today, where she is not. Uh, I have nothing to compare it to, and I know maybe some guys I've listening. Had the, I've had the other. The traditional. Were yeah. you one of the younger guys going through the MRI today? Uh, I was, I think, the youngest person in the facility. Yeah, by far. Yeah, I think right. so. Okay. But, uh, so Sam, you'll, you'll recall the sensation of being totally, totally in the tube. It doesn't bother me, but it, it I know me. they, they have, they pasted a little picture of a forest up on the top inside the thing so you can look at like the stupid little picture of trees and not feel claustrophobic. Oh, I kept, Maybe I, you were in the uh, 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 pediatric MRI. Yeah. <laughs> possible? Yeah, so Elmo, was Elmo a picture Elmo was was it there? You got a sucker when you were done? Yeah, when you are done. All right, Norm MacDonald and Sam yeah. Simon are here and uh, they also are, are doing, you guys are doing a radio show somewhere, is that right? Or you're planning on it or is something's going on? I don't know anything about that. No. Yeah, Why, do you hear some gossip around the yeah, station? Yeah, I understand there's <laughs> oh, uh, you know, interesting. a lot of talk about that. I haven't heard. What is what is the talk? A little by the water cooler? You heard uh, <laughs> Jack yeah. Silver talking? Well, no, no, Jack Silver was talking, but not... Uh, <laughs> 
positively about you. Um, but uh, but you are uh, now now Sam Simon is the producer of uh, The Simpsons and Cheers and The Norm Show, The Drew Carey Show, Taxi, uh, Taxi. I mean, Tracy he, uh, he's so. really uh, gone nuts over there. Yeah. And from what I understand, you're done with your palace out there at, at Pacific. Uh, not Palisades, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the Palisades. Palisades. That's yeah. the fringe of the Palisades. Yeah. Right? You're done with it? Well, I was. I bought the house next door and renovated it, and I bought the other lot, and I made kind of a sort of a starter compound. Right. Oh. Now, are you going to, uh, do you have a fence, a wall around it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so no one can get into you, right? No. Uh, are there cameras also? <laughs> yes. Now, do you have security? Do you have, like, a person there? Sometimes. Sometimes? And we have the dogs, and we're armed, and we got the cameras. <laughs> it's like a militia, dude. <laughs> suddenly, by the way, suddenly, the very, the very affable kind of, you know, comedian Tracy Ullman, uh, Simpsons guy goes away. <laughs> very steel face like Eastwood thing. Yeah, we got the cameras, and we're armed. <laughs> Jesus, what happened to Sam? <laughs> And uh, oh, no. can I ask you, uh, without, I mean, you, you could say, you know, F you, I'm not going to tell you for security reasons, but how much cash do you have lying around the house? Well, I have a safe in the house, and uh, I I keep, you know, because of the gambling, I have, I keep some cash around, but not $100,000, not $50,000. Uh, right. Forget about the, uh, forget about the, well, wouldn't even ask, obviously, about the combination to the safe. <laughs> Is there a key to it or a combo? A combo. A combo. Yeah. But I bet not even a lot of people know where the safe is, right? It's probably, it's probably off in some, behind some wall or something. Am yeah, I it's right about that? Yeah, it's behind a picture. Oh, it is? Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's, it's like uh, Bruce Wayne's house over there. Yeah, it's like, it is a lot like uh, Stately Simon Manor. <laughs> All right, Sam Simon's with us, also a Norm McDonald. I got another picture I can look through the eyes. <laughs> I can look at the people. Now, do you have a safe room there? But no, you don't. Oh, that would be cool. To have. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. No, especially like that. when either were like an earthquake or some guy's breaking in, you just jump into that room, and you got TVs, you got your phone, you got food, right. water, gun. That'd be pretty cool. Well, I'm I'm gonna remodel the um the main house, so you should have gold too, <laughs> because because the like um. Gold? Gold, because at some point, like, the money might not be worth anything. <laughs> right? Well, that's what I hear. I've heard those commercials for gold, and some people sell the gold. They're dental gold, senior yeah. citizens do. By the way, that's that's uh, something Norm and I uh, know the, the deeper <laughs> meaning behind that. Um, for guys like, who say you know, like money not, might not be worth anything one day, that's just a, a great way for us to uh, justify uh, throwing it at the track or at, <laughs> or at a casino. It's like, well, it's not going to be worth anything anyway one day, so I might as well you know, throw it at Santa Anita, right? It won't matter in 20 years. <laughs> well, in Atlantic City, they always have all those uh, signs that go, we will buy gold. You know, cash for gold, right. people's teeth and stuff. <laughs> so terrible. <laughs> you know, have you ever been to a pawn shop in uh, Vegas or Atlantic City? That's where my uh, my ex wife <coughs> won a World Series of Poker bracelet. Also <laughs> bought one there. But well, she bought one there. Some guy won the World Series of Poker and then like pawned the bracelet oh, like a few days right? later. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Wow. Pretty, it's quite a fall. You know, I mean, you win like a Holy lot of money God. when you win that. Oh, so. Yeah. Well, it's quite a recently fall from Grace. I know, like it was a famous guy too. Oh, like you know a, who I mean, it a is? famous poker player. I mean, it was his name engraved on it. She, she knows who. Who I, I don't want to say who it is. But you could figure out who it was by the date. You on can it. figure out who it is, basically. But oh, they don't put your name on it. You, I think you put your name oh, on okay. it. But right. yeah, but whatever. Would would if you wear one around though? Is that a little bit like a really pretentious thing to do? Uh, I don't know. I mean, so like, like at the a... World Series, sometimes they do wear them. I, I, I'm, you know, but but if you walked around like these guys that have nine of them or ten of them, I know. But let me they ask take you, photo. They do photo shoots with them. Right, but dude, let me ask you a question. If you walked into Morton's in Beverly Hills, right? Isn't it Beverly Hills? Yeah. Right. Uh, and you had uh, a, an Emmy on each shoulder. Right. Wouldn't people think you were an a hole? <laughs> I, I I see what you're saying, right? But I think it's a little bit different. I mean, we've all had the, I think most of us have had the opportunity to be in the company of like NFL players who wear the Super Bowl ring. Now, if, if it, that's if, closer, and yeah, yeah but, but there's a big difference between winning the Super Bowl, and winning the World Series. Of I poker. know a couple oh, guys that have so. bracelets, and they don't want to, the other players to know. Yeah, but I you know, you know when they're playing with them. I, I think winning a World Series or an NBA championship is, I mean, takes it takes a, a lifetime. 
of working out and concentrating on your sport. I think playing cards, um, you could pick it up at 32 and win one by 36. And win the World Series by 36? Sure. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think so. All right. Well, I, I, see, them, I see them almost as similar. No, nah, they're, they're not. They're not even close, dude. Well, in your opinion, I mean, they're not very no, close. No, no, no. But it, it shows might... how much you know about sports that you think they're similar. Well, just Look, in numbers, if... there's probably four or five, six thousand bracelets and, and forty uh, rings. Maybe not even. 40. Well, no, but no. Uh, Wait, one what? ring for every guy Super on the Bowl team. Rings. I mean, right. for, forty years, but there's more Super Bowl oh, rings uh, than players, World Series I bracelets. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. there's more guys walking around with a Super Bowl ring on than a World Series bracelet. I say, wear it if you if you want the thing, wear it. Yeah, but it's it's a little pretentious. I mean, because it, it, it has a lot to do with. Um, you know, when you wear one of those around, it's would you tell Roger Staubach to take off his Super Bowl ring? No, but that, yeah, like Roger Staubach started at three years old, you know, throwing footballs, and won one by the time he was like twenty nine or thirty, you know, years very old. Very young, right? Yeah. Um, but these guys, you know, they're completely out of shape, smoking cigars. Well, you, and... you make a very good point about like the comparison about what some people think it's a sport. Some people think. Playing Texas Hold'em is a sport, right? And you go like, what sport? Like, if I'm a, if I'm a fan of NFL football, I can't pay to be in the Super Bowl, <laughs> and, oh, true. and on top true. of that, I can't win it. Like, you know, like I mean, that's like crazy, you know, to even think of that. But <laughs> poker, you just pay. You're in the biggest event there is, and, and it's a single achievement. You it's have one like person. a, right. you have a chance to actually win. But, but, it's crazy that they call it the first of all they call it the World Series, I and mean, that's why people think of it as a sport. Right. And also, I don't know how they can call it World Series. Isn't that a patent? Yeah, I mean, isn't that, that is uh, odd. Maybe they maybe they bought that, or maybe they had to pay baseball yeah. to call it that. All right, Sam Simon, and Norm McDonald are with us. Uh, they're uh, buzzing around the neighborhood, and uh, popped in here. And it's a very good point that that you can't. You know, you can't pay to be in the Super Bowl of football, right? right. You can't pay to, pay to be in the NBA championship. Um, but you can pay to be in the World bucks. Series of Poker. And when and when you're in it, uh, have you ever been in it, by the way? You've been in it, right? Sure. All right. When you join it, you don't think to yourself, I hope I come in 1500th or I hope I come in 1900th. You want to win. Well, and you think you have a shot of it. I would like to be 1500th. You know, I mean, I... I but you, you think you have a shot every time yeah, you get yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. I think I have a chance. But everybody in that room does. And it's the other... Or if you want to compare it to, like, boxing, like, you can knock out the... The champion, right. you can knock out the best players in the in in the in the game. Right, they're si single competitors. Like boxing, you like, yeah, you can't do you that. You got in the ring, like, you get killed. Uh, you get killed. But, it, but like one Mike Tyson punch, even now in his career, and it's uh, certainly you know not oh, the peak. Please. But one Mike punch, one Mike Tyson punch could kill you. Could knock your head not off. Me. Well, I yeah. There's probably not a sport that anyone could buy into that they could win. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but also in in poker, when you join the World Series of Poker and you play in Vegas, you're one of two thousand or eight thousand people, whatever the play. Right. Um, and you make it all the way up to the top table, right, to the last ten people. That's how how five many days? Right. But how many times in in that process, in that five days, to get to the final table? Has luck been on your side? I mean, has you know you throw your cards well, that's down? Another thing is the final table is almost all amateurs. So yeah, that shows right. you that, like... That's true. A lot of it is luck, right? Yeah, supposedly you, like, um, when it was smaller, I know, like, these winners... A lot of times in, in Hold'em, you get in what's called a race. You've got an ace-king, you're against a pair of tens. Right. That's called a race. It's 50-50, and you're all in, the other guy's all in. And I know these guys that used to win the tournament, they used to go 20-0 and 0 in their races. That's a statistic. You've seen that, right, Norm? Yeah. Like Chris Ferguson said he went 20-0 and 0 when he won. Oh, I see. Oh, with the race. Yeah, he won know. every one of those things. But that's un highly that, unusual. Oh, my God. If you, like, you can call. It's like call, it's the luck of calling a coin 20 times in a row. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, and, th and that's when the tournament was even smaller. So these guys now are getting, you have to get really... You know, lucky, or the, they call it also getting not getting unlucky. You know, right. not getting a bad beat because you can have the best hand, and someone can draw out on you, so you can't have that happen either. So you got to be really lucky to get that. All right, Sam Simon and Norm McDonald are with us. Uh, Norm, uh, are, you, are you on the road? Are you, uh, uh, are you yeah, home I'm for a while? Up. No, I'm, I'm on the road. I'm going to go to. Uh, I'm going to be in the Phoenix Improv. Is that right? When is that? That's uh, January the 28th. I'm going to write that down. January 28th. 
Uh, Phoenix Improv. Now, obviously, someone has to drive you to these events, right? Or, no, or no. you fly to these I events. I don't, and you have some weird sort of flight uh, necessities. Yeah, it's got to be a, it's gotta well. be a, a 747 <laughs> with nobody on it. Or... <laughs> but doesn't it have to be a certain model aircraft, Norm? 757, yeah, like right? 767. 767. <laughs> Is it tough to get a 767 from here to Phoenix? No, for for to to Phoenix you have to just take what you can get. You got to go. And <laughs> well, you know, a lot of times you risk it. But you... I, the last two times I've driven though. Right, it's easier that yeah. way. But when you book a reservation, sometimes they'll tell you if you ask, you say what type of aircraft is this yes. and then they'll tell you and then you get there and there's been a change of aircraft. Then what do you do? Do you find another flight? Oh, that's never happened to me. Usually oh. when they describe like I ask them what kind of uh Area foil, it's going to be, and then it is that one. It is, oh, okay, right. So I've had them change it sometimes, and you know, it can accommodate fewer people, or they get a larger plane to accommodate more people. Yeah, I quit smoking, so I'm like kind of, uh, kind of hyped up. <laughs> <laughs> when did you quit smoking? Was I quit. That a I quit no, I just quit smoking, so it's hard for me to like keep concentration. Keep focus. Yeah, yeah I understand that. I, I didn't hear anything Ryan said right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of a having cigarette. a cigarette. Yeah, because this is the first time like I've been so close. Because you know how you guys go out to the door and have a cigarette yeah. all the time. No, I understand. Yeah, so Would I you like me to repeat that. it to Tim? <laughs> no, that's right. Don't no, you have no, it on I, tape? Hey, how <laughs> can't you? You, you can take to it home. Let Norm home. take it home. All right, Sam Simon, Norm McDonald, with us. How Norm? How long have you quit smoking? Well, it's like New Year's, you know. Oh, New Year's, you quit? Yeah, three days before New Year's. How'd you do it? I just just a sheer tyranny of will. Yeah. How long will that <laughs> not last? To, not to overstate it. <laughs> no, I, I I just keep quitting, and then sometimes it sticks. You know, I've done it a couple times. Right. Did you ever quit for a stand? Uh, not time? really. No, no, never. I mean, but you only smoke. You don't smoke like even a whole pack of. Nah, I, I, yeah. I maybe like two cigarettes a day. No. Um. <laughs> well, I give it take. And you only like that two dollars a race. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't smoke that much. But I, uh, I I do know that, you know, there's some people who smoke like three or four packs a day. Yeah. And I think those are the people who uh, really cut their life short. Um, I think if you have two drinks a day, I think if you have a cigarette or two a day, I think if you make a better two a day. I mean, if you do things in moderation. Longer. I think you can enjoy, uh, you know, uh, those type of things a little longer. So it's a rule of twos. Anything twice a day is well, okay. Well, I think if you have like, you know, if you have 45 drinks and you drive to Vegas, um, I think you're you're pushing your luck. You know? I, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, because you're on the road, you're completely bombed. You could kill somebody. Right. You could run somebody off the road. Right. You can kill yourself. And why have have the additional 43 drinks when two would have been fine? Exactly. Now, I don't know if you've seen this, but Mothers Against Drunk Drivers now say that driving buzzed is the same as driving drunk, right? Which is simply not the truth. Well, they have that ad now where they oh, say, really? if you drive, have you seen that one where the cars are filled with liquor? They're hearing them during the football games. They say, if you drive drunk, you will be caught. And these guys are being pulled over, and they open the door, and all the all the beer and out, all really? the wine come out. <laughs> I haven't seen that. And it's like, it's just, I, I'm, I'm really against driving drunk. Don't get me wrong, but it's so not true. So many people do it. Oh, yeah, no, a lot of people do it, and they get, you know, some people do it their whole lives. They get lucky without, you know, ever getting an accident or getting caught. Sure. Um, like when I'm on the freeway. Well, when you say buzz, you mean that just slightly? Yeah, like a drink and a half, right. two drinks. You know, I'm not right, talking about right, uh, right. you know 90. But uh, when I'm driving home on on like a Friday night, like we'll leave here 11 o'clock, I just assume everybody on the freeway is buzzed, or at least you know right. at least buzzed or drunk, and I try to keep my distance away from you know a lot of people. It's like defensive driving all the way back to the valley. Mm. Um, but there are you know I, I would say what what percentage of the people you think on the highway? At 1 a.m. in Southern California, are buzzed. I mean, it's got to be high, right? It's got to be 40 percent. I, I was going to say 33 to 40 percent. Right. I was, uh, you took so, so you're the, right out of my. So head. if the cop pulls somebody over, I think he's got like a, a three and five chance of getting the guy for a DUI. So they just turn a blind eye to it. I don't know if they do. If I, why, they, why couldn't cops just at one o'clock go to all the bars and? As well, they do. Well, that's how I. I that's so you they, got. Yours. That's how you got nailed. I. Uh, um, Which one? Uh, I was I was I pulled know. over. Do you count them like Emmys? Your first one, your second one. <laughs> no, I never got one. Oh, you, oh, you never got one. But I was pulled over because um, I was with a girl that uh, uh, a woman. I'm sorry, I don't know why I keep doing that. But uh, she was supposed to be the designated driver, and we were at a uh, sort of an area that has a lot of bars, and she got really drunk, and she, and it was 2 a.m. and all the everyone was leaving the car parking lot, and I was. 
I wasn't supposed to drive it. I thought, okay, I'm okay to drive. She's so sick. She's like leaning out the car, throwing up as we drive by the cop who's waiting right by the, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the you know, the exit to the, of the, Wait, right. Our parking lot, wow. oh, gosh, waiting for really? pull over. She's like leaning out, uh, <laughs> vomiting on the side of the car. Mm. <laughs> so they do wait in places like. And that. you got pulled over for that? I did get pulled over for that. And then they nailed you or not? Um, it's kind of a weird uh, story, but. Um, Simpsons, yeah. The cop was the Simpsons fan. Is it one of those deals where money makes things go away? No. Uh, do you, like, do Bart and they the let you go? Of, no, I was being real nice. Uh, I made a couple jokes. She was, like, she went over, she staggered out of the car and laid down on some lawn and just continued. She's like, ah, take me home. She was, like, real. Wow. Like, cantankerous. And, and you got away with it, And huh? still throwing up. Oh. And, uh, uh. I was, you know, I was being nice and stuff because I actually really like cops and I think they have a, a tough, they have the toughest job, job in the world. and and they're great. And uh, what happened ultimately? I said, well, look, I said, look, what if I let her drive? <laughs> said, that was a good joke. I made another joke, and then uh, the the it was a woman cop, and um, uh, she said, "This is true." She said, "Is that your girlfriend?" I said, "Not really," and she said. Uh, if I let you off, will you go out with uh, my partner? Wow, what's his name? Yeah, it was, yeah. Like, it was another. It was another woman cop. Yeah. You're probably a dude. So I said. So I said, yeah. So she said. Uh, his name I, would, said, I would take the DUI if it was a she dude. Said, <laughs> Officer Bill. Yeah, really. You should have just taken the DUI. I think I actually think you met her. I think Norm met this. Uh, but after you yeah. saw the chick, you should have. If, if no, she, she, she was really. No, but we're looking back. Right? The shame of the DUI. Uh, we got to take a break. It's uh, Conway and Women in with us is Sam Simon and Norm McDonald. We're live on ninety-seven point one Free FM. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is the uh, Conway and Whitman Show. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. Norm McDonald and uh, Sam Simon are with us. Yeah, Sammy and Normo. Yeah, look at that. Because you're very close with them, so it's... Yeah. Hey, Sammy, Normo, look at you, man. Yeah, man. And, uh, and again, Sam Simon, a big uh, producer in Hollywood. And Norm McDonald, one of the uh, funnier, funniest people on the planet, man. Look at that dude. Maybe the funniest... Yeah, sitting there with that jacket on, all that cash, all that humor, big stud. <laughs> get a lot of chicks there, don't you? Are you talking about Sam? No, no you. No, you, no dude. Sam gets He's got that cheese back of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Norm lures them back to his uh, to his uh, <laughs> house with some cheese. So, uh, do you like cheese? <laughs> and they stick their uh, head in the kid's room like, what, do you have a three-year-old? Like, no. Nope. Seventeen. <laughs> he just loves this. Uh, loves the uh, hey, Sesame funny? Street. Dor Dorms. I, I would never. I'm not insulting you, but yeah. here it comes. It's kind of funny that uh, <laughs> sometimes when Norm is on a winning streak in Vegas, he'll buy clothes from the oh, stores. Yeah, oh, in awful. Vegas? Yeah. Oh, it's awful. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know anything about clothes, but <laughs> like I'll be up so much money, and I'll go, "Well, I know I'm going to blow it all." Right. right. So if I'm on a rest or something, I'll go, I should just buy stuff, so I'll have stuff. Is that where you got that jacket? No. No, this is a nice jacket. It's a nice jacket. But no, it's ones, nice. The other ones I have are crazy. What's, so, the, what's the most you spent at one of the stores? It's just at the end, the guy tells me, like, because he's like, no, you want this. He's like, They're Italian. He's so like, they dress you, basically. Persian or something. Yeah, yeah. They dress you. And they're like, no, you don't want that one, this one. And then in the mirror, it looks all right. And you look like a, like these guys, like, Greasy and you know oily, you know what I mean. But it looks yeah. good. So Persian look or good what? what the... You look good to, in in that in that little world, you know. Right. Then I mean? you take it home and it sucks. Yeah, yeah. Like I have a blue leather like jacket, <laughs> and like I, I got a lot of little snakeskin shoes. <laughs> what do you spend on shoes up there? I don't know. At the end, the guy just says oh, he'll send it all to me. He uh, doesn't tell you the price. Well, as, as he goes, you know, he's like, you need a belt. And I've never worn a belt in my life. I don't know why I need a belt. I'm sorry, and he ships the clothing back home? Yeah, and he's like, wait a minute. No, you want one more of these. Bring him another shirt. But they're not free. He's just saying. It, <laughs> right. You know? Well, yeah, they're not free. But I always thought those shops, you know, they're always uh, really empty. overpriced. 
There's no I mean, I, nobody ever in there. And I'm like, how do these guys stay in business? That's how they stay in business. Yeah. Do you know this guy? I think you've seen him. Who? This is it's. I assume it's that place at Caesar's Palace with that guy with the giant glasses. And, yeah, yeah. Do you know that guy? No, I haven't seen that dude. In the forum, he's shops? sort of a Vegas celebrity. <laughs> Yeah, he's yeah. like the soup Nazi. Everybody knows who he yeah. goes to check him out. Yeah, he's no, I don't know the dude. <laughs> I don't go to those shops. You know, I, I barely f spend money on food in Vegas. Yeah, there any of those places. Are you know? I don't do it very often. You know, I did learn from uh, again Norm McDonald, Sam Simon with this. I did learn from Tim Russert. You know, uh, from uh, Meet, the Meet the Press. Meet the Press. Right? Yeah, he wrote a book about his dad, or his dad wrote a book or something. And uh, I was listening to it uh, a couple months back. And he says his dad gave him one great piece of advice in his life. And that is, if you drink, you got to eat. <laughs> it's a great piece of advice. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times when you drink, you forget to eat. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when you get that wild hangover in the morning. Oh, you know, yeah, and that yeah. lasts for three or four days. So if you're going to drink, right. you got to eat. You got to lay a base there. Yeah. <laughs> when great. guys go to rehabs or detoxes uh, or whatever they're called, right? they eat like crazy. They have the best food because these guys have been starving themselves to death on bar snacks for like sometimes for oh, yeah. weeks. You know what I mean? Where all they've eaten is pickled eggs. Right, they go into the rehab and say, Where's that um, the pretzels and the chips that mix? There was a rice chest in there. Yeah. It's amazing what drunks will eat, though. Oh, I mean, yeah. pickled eggs, there's pickled uh, uh, cow or pig's pig feet. Knuckles. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pig knuckles. Pig knuckles. Uh, you wouldn't eat that crap if you were sober. No, you're not supposed to eat bar snacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second uh, great piece of advice I've gotten in my life. You're not supposed to eat bar snacks. <laughs> so does Tim Russert like to drink? I don't know. Oh. I mean, I, I can't tell by uh, you know by watching him once well, a week. Well, because he eats, he looks like he eats so much. Yeah, he got, he's got <laughs> he's the eating down. down. I don't know yeah. if he's got the drinking down. Yeah, maybe he took half of the advice. <laughs> That's right, the uh, thing. Alcohol's so fattening. Drinks are so fattening. It's I don't know. I, I say I don't think you should eat and drink. Like if you want to be well, thin. if the mother's against <laughs> drunk driving, do you have to be a mother of a child that died? From no, a, no. You can just you can join. You just be a mother. That's a hefty price to pay to be in the club. Well, why? Do the, what does that have to do with mothers? That's just an ad. Well, mothers can be concerned them. about their children, even for any reason. Can't you be a mother for flu shots? Well, you think you have to bring a death certificate to join the group? No, I just think it's yeah. Sexist. Mothers who get can get cancer. I think it's sexist. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there's, there's no anything certain. that doesn't allow a certain sex in. Obviously, a man cannot be a mother. You know what, Norm? Right. I think you can, though. Actually, I think that men can be members of Mothers Against uh, Drunk Driving. No, wouldn't they have to be fathers against drunk driving? No, I, I think that... I think that, that would that, be a fad. Your point is a great point, that it would be sexist yeah. to not allow a guy. But I believe men can be advocates and can be in that organization. Like, if my child died, if someone, uh, uh, you know, drunk killed my child... You know, I'd be hopping mad if they wouldn't let me in that organization. <laughs> I don't mind telling you. Oh, yeah, you. absolutely. But then again, if you were in the organization, would you tell everybody you were in the organization? Man, mothers are going to start. Yeah, man, man they against me for a fruit. And plus, I already have the trauma of losing the child. People wouldn't want to be my friend over that anyway. <laughs> Well, you probably want to bond with people that had a similar experience. Oh, definitely. And you wouldn't be able, they wouldn't let you yeah, be right. uh, turned away at the door. People no, because that's one of the worst things with something classic. like that, like your child goes missing, whatever. And it's like, people always say it's the worst, you know. Oh, yeah. And But it's also you lose a lot of friends because people... They don't want to be around you. Yeah, There's a lot of drama, a lot of a, drama. Right? Well, it's a dinner at a party. You know, you have a dinner party and you know, we I, invite Bill. Yeah. Oh, his kid's still gone. <laughs> You know, <laughs> kids still go it's on. almost like after the kid turns up, you start inviting Bill. Oh, man, he's a he's everybody the, the hot on the you know? but, but now, what happens if it's a bad outcome? I mean, if Bill's kid turns up dead, you then you begin to invite him again, or his kid's got to turn up alive. What's the Good Lord? Well, the, that's a fair question given yeah, the conversation. I think that the the real thing is you want to get the uh, remains, like so you can ask some. <laughs> Hey, Norm, listen, you you love your son, right? Of course. And, no, I know you do. You really yeah. love your son. Yeah, I love him. I know you're also a little bit of a hypochondriac. They say the greatest tragedy is for a parent to outlive their child. Right? Oh, yeah. That's true. You never want to, bur you never oh, yeah. want to bury your son. Oh, yeah. God, no. Yeah, no, if, if anything happened, my daughter, my life would be over. But, but then okay. on the other hand, because I mean, I've heard people like go like, 
It, it never leaves. It never, you know what I mean? <laughs> God knows it's a horrible thing, like having to bury a child. But uh, they go, it never ends. You know, every day is painful. Then you see the guy's cracking up on Larry King. You know, he's having a good time. <laughs> Wait, who, oh, you mean uh... John Walsh? Yeah, anybody. Well, look, you know, I think even, you know, for people. <laughs> and, cracking up. How'd you get that code for John Walsh? <laughs> well, he's the guy on Larry King whose yeah, son died who want, sometimes laughs. I didn't want to say the guy's name. Right. No, yeah. I mean, well, no, I think what happens is. <laughs> yeah, but he can still laugh after you. Right. I, I mean. I think if you, you suffer. Know, Bill Cosby had a, had, a, had a son that was killed. And he still performs stand-up comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. I don't know how so, he does it, but. No, I mean, but I think that if that so happens. He, he, but Tim was saying my life would be over. I don't think your life is over. I just think once in a while you're sad because you're like having a party. You're having a good time. You're like, I forgot my dead kid. <laughs> and then you get sad. <laughs> but like if you... Because I don't think your mind can, can you know, always be in one... But if you had a young life. child that died... Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm being picky. No, I'm, I'm be kind of being serious. You go like, I, I wish I hadn't outlived my 16-year-old. Well, there's, gu there's guilt, like, yeah. Well, no, but see, the, what Norm's saying is, and, and this is uh, this is true, whenever you have, like, a kid, like, let's say you have a nine-year-old kid, right? Right. And that kid has been invited to uh, birthday parties for nine years of his friends and everything like that. And and a lot of people are invited to parties because their kids are friends. You know, the adults, you know, don't socialize, but the kids do. So I mean, what ha I, if I, something I, happens to that kid, you're no longer invited to any of those parties in that circle because you're you're like the downer. I know. I mean you're like and, and they don't wanna they don't want to abuse you by inviting you and you see all these kids buzzing around, you're like, oh boy. Right? That happened to Tommy Lee actually. He he had a party and you know, a, a child died. Yeah, I knew the guy who, whose uh, kid died. Oh, I mean, yeah, and I knew the uh, producer. So obviously He's not getting invites from Tommy Lee anymore. Anyway. Well, I, I think he sued Tommy Lee, didn't he? Yeah, there, there was, was some sort lawsuit of a lawsuit over that, yeah. as I recall. I guess there was really nothing. Like... All right, it's light Friday around here, everybody. <laughs> Welcome sad, to uh, Norm MacDonald and Sam Simon. First they're both we did with brain us. cancer. Yeah, and they're both we with us. Children not being outlived by their parents. Well, you have one child. Right. Do you ever feel like it would be easier if you had ten? Well, you mean backups? No, I'm saying if one went missing. Nah, yeah, well, then what, the other nine could look for him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one is like, he gets the whole bottle of wax. Yeah, no, it's easy to have uh, one kid. You have uh, maybe well, two. You're putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to live uh, your whole life, uh, you know, in fear of everything? But on the other hand, if you have ten children, the odds of something horrific will happen higher, to one yeah. of them during your life is pretty big. Yeah, but right? then again, I don't know if you can love all ten kids as much as you can love just the one. No, I agree with you. Oh, yeah. I think you can. Uh, what? Yeah. You don't have enough love to go around. No, sure. Uh, parents of mo you mean parents of multiple kids don't love their kids as much as you love your daughter? Mm. Or, or, or not? Let's be personal. No, if you have the guy, six kids. No, because if you have one child, right? Right. Okay, it well, gets all the you, attention. It gets all the attention. Now, what if you have ten, right? Is it right. possible? What if you had a thousand? Well, you think attention is love? Do you think if you oh, had a stand-up comedian? Do you think if you had a thousand children, <laughs> got... it would be possible to love them all? Well, no, you couldn't I wouldn't even know. You wouldn't them have all. any time. Well, right. Oh, we gotta take a break though. here. Norm McDonald and Sam Simon are with us. It's Conway and Whitman live on ninety-seven point one free FM. I'm talking about two or three though. <laughs> Verse. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway Whitman Show live at 97.1 Free FM. Sam Simon and Norm, McJo Mor Norm McDonald join us here on uh, this Friday evening. And before the break, we were talking about if you had six kids, could you love them as much as you love one kid? And I don't think it's possible. I don't think you have. I think you have favorites. Um, and I think even when you have two kids, I think you have a favorite. Uh, I, I don't know if, if, if you agree or not, but I think that... Um, you know that you you probably may have been your dad's favorite or your mom's favorite. No, I definitely believe. I and my parents have passed away, but I absolutely believe that my mom and dad uh, have loved my brother and me. Absolutely, exactly the same. Absolutely the same. And and I and I think I think that there are qualities about both of us that were special to say my mom or my dad. There's right. something about my brother that was special to them that. And something about me, maybe that was the special voices. to them. Yeah, sure. The impressions they got, they love those. But uh, <laughs> no, I think that uh, Brian do Cronkite, Brian, we love that. <laughs> what the other guy do? No, he, no impressions. Juggled. He 
he, my dad and my mom always made it very clear that they loved us the same. And I. Well, what about dogs? You got three dogs. Love them all the same. All the D same. Don't even try. Is that right? Love them all the same. Wow. See, I don't know. If I, if I had six kids, I definitely would have a favorite. Now there's now there's special things about them. Right. That I have spe like the you know the oldest, the first. But it feels one. like a Sophie's choice. I mean, you got you're moving into an old folks home. Take me. And you can keep two of dogs. Nope. You, you couldn't nope. make that decision? You could take me instead of... Is that right? Absolutely. Mm. Oh, that's funny, because I would never take me over anyone. <laughs> You're talking about a dog. Like even my son. Or... What about a dog? <laughs> oh, a dog. He's talking about dogs. No, I'm saying... A dog? No, I'm, <laughs> say... <laughs> no, I'm saying that Tim is... At, I think what Tim is when he said Sophie's choice. So I think you're asking me, if somebody said to me, you've got to choose one or two of your dogs, because right. we're going to take the other or the other's going to be killed or something right. like that, I would absolutely plead with them to to kill me and leave the dogs. Is no, that right? Oh, he would. Yes, he would. I absolutely would. Yeah, you would. I absolutely would. Yeah. Now, now, Norm, if if it was you or your, or your son, would you plead to the killers to take your son? I, would, I wouldn't <laughs> plead with him. I'd say anybody but me. Anybody yeah, including your me. son. Yeah. <laughs> because, because the thing is, if... Um, you, if your son dies, it would be horrible, you know. Right. Like you say, your life would be over. Mm -hmm. But, it, you know, it wouldn't really be over. If they took you, it would be over for yeah, sure. Right. <laughs> you know, and also I would have to put my son through that. But, you know, it's it's interesting, and I don't, I don't want to say well, anything. You put your son through hell anyway, though, right. huh? No, he's dead. He's, well, he's, that's true. All right. All right. How about this? So, I mean, I wouldn't be. It would be an easy decision, but it certainly wouldn't be. Uh, I would certainly be plagued with uh, oh, guilt, yeah, guilt and remorse. Months. Sure. I am not following this. You're saying you would, you would have your son killed. Yeah, because I believe there's nothing more precious than life. <laughs> than your life. Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's talk to a Matt in San Diego. You guys oh got headphones God. over there. All right. Hey, how's it going? Matt, he thanks he for went... holding on. Matt, Matt, we'll talk to Matt. Go ahead. You hey, can put your uh, headphones the great Norm on. Norm McDonald. How's, how's it going, brother? Hey, hey. what's up, man? Hey, I just want to know when uh, when Dirty Work 2 is coming out. Uh, Dirty Work 2, well, that's... Oh, my God. I is it too be... loud? Yeah, it's really loud. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> in a landline. Right up, here, or right up there. No, I got it, man. It's right right there. Was it that one? It might be this one. There you go. All right. Yeah. Is Matt still there? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, Dirty Work uh, 2 is like, I don't know, because it's still in pre-production. Uh, Sam's supposed to have the the second draft finished like I'm this I'm still week. working on uh, Norm's notes from the last draft. But okay. Well, hey, I'm going to give you a quote. Let me see if uh, you can place it. Okay. Okay. And uh, here, here's my sorry impression of uh, the great Norm MacDonald. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, you know... A date rapist has to have a lot of more charm than a regular rapist. <laughs> I know what that is. <laughs> yeah, I know what that is too. Uh, yeah, you know, because uh, you know that Artie Lang, he's uh, <laughs> he's no longer a baby gorilla. He's a big gorilla now. <laughs> oh, we were talking uh, about that. All right, thanks, what, man. Thanks for calling. So. Jesus, oh, terrible. <laughs> Glad I took his call. <laughs> Norm's co-star Artie Lang in Dirty Work. One reviewer said that Artie had all the charm of a date rapist. Right. And so Norm cheered Artie up by saying... Well, the, the date rapist has to have enormous charm. As opposed to a regular rapist. Yeah. Sure. I mean... <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no, a date rapist... A date rape is... He has to... He spends more time and money. Yeah, well, you have to get a date. You have to charm them into your right. uh, apartment. He's in right. many ways smarter. Yeah. Well, he's... You know what? He's more patient. It's funny that you said that a real rapist. Yeah, I mean, like a real... Well, date rape, a I don't simple know. rape. I mean, you know. Uh, no, it is completely different. Yeah, it really is uh, a different. Um, Less of a stigma with date rape than you know back alley rapist. No, it's a different motive, I think. You know. Yeah. Well, sometimes it's, it's a misunderstanding or whatever it is, hormones. Yeah, something. But you know, that's different and, than stalking a person and breaking in and raping a seventy-five-year-old woman. Yeah. Like a like a seventy-five-year-old woman rarely gets date raped. <laughs> right. She's gonna. She has to depend upon the regular. She, traditional she, rape. Yeah, I mean, if she, it's going to happen, I never have heard that before in my life. I hear you like she's not, she's not been taken to Nate Nails and kind of right. charmed by yeah, some old bingo dude. and then wacko. There's some really weird ideas bouncing around this well, room. It's Friday, you know, world's coming to an end. All right, it's uh, Conway and Women, Sam Nate Simon, now. and Norm McDonald are with us. We're live on 97.1 Free FM.
Come to 133 Promenade Walk in Long Beach Sunday, January 21st at the Model Grand Opening. Check out the bright open spaces, the amenities, the lifestyle. The first hundred people will receive $10,000 towards their closing costs. Come on down. You may never leave. Log on to 133promenade.com for floor plans and more details. Conway and Whitman Show. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. Here 8 to 11 p.m. every single weeknight. Sam Simon joins us with Norm McDonald. Sam Simon is a uh, world-renowned producer of some of the uh, hottest sitcoms on the planet. And what happened to... Now, this is a show business question because right. you're obviously in show business. You know a lot of people. What happened to... What the happened sitcom? to... You know, the sitcom is over, right? Yes. I mean, the... The sitcom... The, the three-camera sitcom is gone and will never be back. Okay. But, but all of those sitcoms in the 70s and 80s, they all had writing staffs of about 15 to 20 guys per show. It got like that, yeah. Okay. In the well, 90s, yeah. All right, but what happened to these guys? Hey, where they uh, all A go? lot of them are uh, facing some pretty hard times. Uh, they, they bought a lot of, they bought expensive homes. Right. They were making, the money was... The money was crazy back then, Tim. What, what, did, they, what did you pay a, uh, a showrunner back then? Oh, a showrunner? Forget showrunner. Like, you could be... What did you pay a writer back then? Ten grand a week? Oh, my God, Tim. Th you could pay a guy 10000 a night. Is that right? Who wasn't even that good. Really? Yep. Wow. They just come in one night a week. When you say that the, the three I camera... I get that job. <laughs> what? I got to get that job. You can easily that have either. that job. That was Are the you best kidding? Job. That you punch would have been good guy at that. Come in Wait, once a week. Twenty-five thousand I heard you can get a, 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 some guys charge twenty-five grand a night to come in and write jokes, and sometimes they wouldn't write any. Sometimes they wouldn't. Wow. Seems like a waste of money. Well, it was a huge waste of money. I mean, it was if, just I, if I was going to have a guy over the house for twenty-five thousand dollars, such a buyer's market. You needed people. So these guys that had some credits, they could sit back and say, "Well, I want to work every day, but you know, I'll come in two days a week." But but I'm saying if you hired a guy for twenty five thousand dollars a night to come in and write jokes, right? And some guy and sometimes that guy would sit in and not write a joke. I would be furious. I would be I would be out of my mind. That's right. like hiring a guy to come over to build a fence for you in the backyard for twenty five grand, and he doesn't do it, right? But these guys get away with it, huh? They did for a while. Jesus Christ! I'd like to have that kind of money. All right, so so what happened to these? Well, they were making so much money on those shows. Right. You know, the, 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 these shows were really popular. People really liked them, as opposed to now, where it is my belief that um, there are there there the three camera shows that are on the air. Right, now, when now, you say that, we, you use that term. A guy driving around doesn't. What's a three camera show? A mean? three camera show is that style of comedy. It's not like Scrubs, which is great, or or uh, um, My Name Is Earl, or The Office. I'm talking about that traditional show that's shot in front of an audience, and it's called a three camera show because they're shooting with three or four cameras simultaneously, right. and it's this amped up. Uh, you know, unrealistic, uh, yeah. the acting is overblown, they're playing to the house, they write all these jokes that aren't really funny, and I think it's like the old uh, Hollywood musicals, which went out of style, because they just seem so silly now. And Was Everyone Loves Raven, was that a three-camera show? It was, and that was a great one. Yeah, that was a great. I, I saw that today. That that show is hysterical. I saw one. I really didn't watch it, you know, every week. But uh, we were just talking about that. I think that's probably the last great one that went off the air. Right. And how many how many shows do you need to uh, to? It, it used can. to be a hundred to get into syndication. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. It used to be a hundred. Now I think it can be less. But see, but that's I, where the money is, right? That is where the money is, but that whole business has changed. You know, there's there's DVDs now, and and uh, it, 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 all that's different now. So, um, so where's the money to be made in show business now? It's reality. Well, they make money in reality shows and the the primetime game shows because they cost so little to make. They can make money first run on those. Oh, I see. Right. In but other words, no like they used value. to run a huge deficit. When they would make, um, you know, some of these shows, especially with big stars, when in the in the first season, like like say the um, the Matt LeBlanc show, right, the Joey show, Joey, yeah. I mean, I would guess that show was was running, you know, millions in in deficit, right, first run, you know, in the first season, right, because they were counting on it being a hit, and they had you know uh, quality, you know, uh, experienced producers. Right. They're, running, producers. they're running a show that's had a, a star, like yeah. it's a hit that's not already a hit. Right. They're banking on it stuff, but right. Um, so they lost a lot of money on it. 
I would guess, yeah. Right. All right, uh, Norm McDonald's with us and uh, Sam Simon. And uh, Norm's uh, just finishing his dinner. Um, Jesus Christ. He's got a whole the bag. The Norm of... show was a really I'm expensive sorry. show. An entire bag of chips in his I'm mouth, sorry. man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't think you'd notice. <laughs> Did you get another Fanta? We were out there having Fanta orange sodas, and Norm was reminiscing about having Fanta as a child, and now he's uh, like hitting the Fanta. Like that's your second or things. third Fanta tonight, isn't it? Bring you back to childhood, huh? I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't mean to eat in the studio. Like <laughs> Do you do that? That smoking. You didn't really? realize you might have to talk <laughs> on the radio. That smoking's really got to you, huh? Yeah, you gotta keep busy. But Sam's right. Like TV is. Uh, is uh, He's back to what he knows now. See, he's got a hint to the guy taking the attention off the uh, inappropriate eating in the room yeah, and right back to the fans hitting his expertise. Yeah, TV. Like in the old days, they'd have TV shows. And uh, nowadays they have like people like look at the um, computers, right? But if you, <laughs> no, uh, real, they play those computer games too. I think no YouTube the video games. YouTube people watch YouTube. All right, but where is the money to be made in show business today? <clears throat> I mean, where where are the, where are the there's, people? There's mo there's lots of money to be made everywhere. You these guys that make the video games make a lot of money. You can still make money doing these. TV shows and the movies, there's lots of money to be made. But it's not the same kind of money back. It was back not in like the 80s, the stealing, right? Stealing, like from the sitcoms that they used to have. Right. But, uh, but where, I mean, are, are people in reality based TV shows right now, is the budget uh, it, it close to what the sitcoms were? No. No, no. Hey, do me a favor. Hey, Jerry, can you shut Norm's mic off for the segment? <laughs> Yeah, just shut it off. Thanks. Also, buddy. why would you like hey, if you when wanna, you're done with your chips? You'll, if you want to sneak in. like some food in the store, why do you do uh, potato chips? I don't know. Is it, and, Isn't that like the worst? And Wasn't then, there like something soft in the then, machine? And then after three guys pointed out, there there didn't seem to be any kind of slowdown. What are those? Yeah, it's like soft. Uh, but when you're done with the chips, we'll turn it back on. No, it just it drives people nuts when they hear that that noise. You know, you know. Um, well, the but, bag is noisy too. Yeah, he's got. But I like how he's, he was opening the bag underneath the council light, <laughs> trying to hide it. It was very. It was, it was very innocent. Hey, you know the on highlights, All Goofus right. and Gallant. All right. Remember it, Goofus and Gallant? Mike's back. No. Um, you remember Goofus and Gallant? No, I don't know. In that highlights, is. one guy did everything bad, and one guy did oh, in everything. Oh, the magazine. Yeah, I come right. in with Norm. His he's eating chips. Right. He's the mic has to be shut off. Right. Here I am. I've got a. I've got the, you got your top on your on my, drink. the top on my drink. I'm there telling anecdotes. Sitting up and yeah, sharing your expertise. Up, sharing there my expertise go. on TV. All right. All right. Norm McDonald and Sam Simon are with us. i uh, talking about Norm's them. Norm's funnier, though. Well, I was wondering if you think, if you find, like, because uh, Sam was saying, like, sitcoms of the old days are relics and everything like that. Me, personally, I watch uh, The Honeymooners and, you know, I love Lucy and shows like that. Right. That have live studio audiences. Yeah, I don't. And I, don't, I can't get used to these shows without uh, audience. Like my name is Earl. I can't get. Yeah, I need laughter. I need people laughing. Right, in order for you to with laugh. Me, right. In order for me to laugh. Um, yeah. And now I've I've seen. It's one of my favorite shows. My name is Earl. There's people that watch silent movies and enjoy them still. Right. But I've you noticed. Know? I've noticed also in television, especially in comedies, where this uh, this happens to be true. And it, and it wasn't true of Seinfeld, and it wasn't true of uh, Everyone Loves Raymond, but it is true of the sitcoms that are out now, or, or at least the comedies are out nowadays, that some of them are really good and some of them are really, really bad. You I mean, don't think that's always been true? I don't think so. I, I think in Raymond, there was a consistent level of humor throughout the whole series. Oh, you series. mean an individual I'm talking, a series? I'm talking in a series. Yeah, maybe. Um, but now the, 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 the comedies are on today. One of them, you know, it can be really great one, one uh, Tuesday night. And the next Tuesday night could be just dreadful. Well, one thing about that, you know, this may be, there's a reason they like the audience and there's a reason you rehearsed there. I always wondered about that for the hour shows, except on The Simpsons, you know, we we had people whose judgment we trusted the whole time. And, you know, we used to do the readings and stuff like this. But on the four camera shows, you did have a crew. You did have all these run throughs. You did have people that were sitting in the audience the whole time. You did have rehearsals. So... I mean, maybe that's something as opposed to these shows now where they send the pages out to a set right. and they got a director there. I don't know if you trust him or not, but, you know, it is true. I wonder, like, how do you know whether the stuff's going to be good or not? But where did all those people go? I mean, all the people that used to work on sitcoms. 
Uh, the Some of them are trying to write hours now, I know. But the, not only the creative people, but also the technical people, the lighting, the, the cameramen and everything. I mean, there was a whole industry of people who were working, you know, 35, 40 shows a, a year, and they knew they were going to be back year after year because the show was successful. Yeah. And where are all those people? Have they, have they quit show business? Have they moved out of, out of California? Well, aren't they working on the shows that are popular now? I mean, but, what, but there aren't skill. Any. Well, sure there are. I mean, there's Deal or No Deal. There's these uh, these reality shows. There's these game shows. Or, don't, don't, doesn't the crew just move to whatever show is hot? But, you know, I don't think you have, like, on Deal or No Deal... I don't think you have all the technical people that you would have on a sitcom. Oh, well, that might be true. Yeah, I wouldn't um, know. I mean, Maybe you have a lot of them. I haven't really, I don't know. Like in like in wardrobe and, and lighting and all that oh, stuff. Oh, well, that's true. Right. Um, but also, the pa you notice that the, the, the pacing of shows has become slower and slower to try to keep up with the, the you know stupid Americans. <laughs> um, but I've noticed that, especially in the reality-based shows, that, that the pa you know, pacing of a sitcom was always pretty quick. You know, there was a you know a joke. I think, but I think it got like too quick. I think it got so amped up. I know, like even, I guess Cheers was once in a while. I'll see like an old episode of something, and I'll be curious about it. I know that show. I just saw one, and it really struck me how, like. The audience would be ahead. They'd be relishing just you know. The, the pace of, they knew that Sam and Diane had some issue between them, and they just like, you know, they'd go two or three pages before they actually hit you with the, and I, I kind of like that. And they, right. But that's, isn't it possible? That's one of the things that I think killed the sitcom now is they don't, it became too rapid fire. Right. All right. Sam Simon and Norrie Donald are with us. Isn't Sorry. it, is it possible that, that there could be a great sitcom again? Yeah, I think so. I think, but I, I don't think it'll be what they became. I think, but you know, if someone wants to do, I also think it'll be a smaller, right? Like the way Carl Reiner used to do the Dick Van Dyke show by himself, or the way Larry David has a small staff and he does, uh, the Curb Your Enthusiasm by, and that's a great show too. But, you know, I don't think it'll be the grotesque, overblown, thing right. that uh, is kind of dying out but right you know now. everything is everything is so cyclical that I mean we're talking about television like it's a thousand years old and it's not it's it was it a hundred is it less than a hundred years old right tell well they didn't have TV shows for uh, I mean, like, how, the first how, 50 years if it's a hundred uh, how, yeah, how, I'm, I'm wondering out loud how old television is and I don't know but let's assume it's uh, you know not a hundred years old yeah, let's say that the, the shows that the people... Texaco Star Theater well, right? time, when was that time show? said that the Simpsons was the best television show of the 20th century right so i assume that means they that was it when the mm, when show the, of tv when the century yeah. Yeah, right. Right. so if television started in with milton burl in the 1920s or whatever congratulations 50s when 1930s or when when 20s I, 50s yeah. when 50s. i don't know when television started but the point i'm making is that if it's cyclical then i mean we're, we're talking norm's of, back to eating man what no, did you get two bags of chips no i was throwing this away. oh i see all right no. <laughs> it doesn't matter <laughs> but there are things that go away that don't come back uh, you know i mean there's there's stuff that stops being popular yeah but but uh, this is what this is what i um i think that the brian are, con are confused about and and you're in the in the business so you would know if something was was very very successful and made a lot of people a lot of money how come it went away? Right, and 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 well, and the and the P.S. Well, won't it come back? I mean, of, and the answer I think well, is. I think that we see stuff. I think you see real behavior on TV because of reality shows. I think these things just got so grotesque and overblown. I think that they are the equivalent of a movie musical. Here, here's another thing that's true. It's like the movie music. When you go see a movie, they still make movies with songs, original songs in them that the characters sing. They're cartoons. It's right. not, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ruby Keeler and Dick Powell and Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. And I think that that's sort of what's what you see in TV. You know, you still have these little stories that are with a lot of jokes in them, but they're they're cartoons. But you know what, Sam? That's a very good example, because what you what you're talking about is animation. And, and uh, your yeah. your show, The Simpsons, is a perfect example of the point I was trying to make. That's that why it's acceptable to watch that. But because see, it came back, not though. real people. But you guys brought animation back. You brought that genre back. Isn't it likely that the genre of the half-hour sitcom, as animation came back, that it, too, like Cheers, like The Cosby well, Show, will return? Okay, I'll just say, I don't think that... Um, you know, maybe there's going to be a great three-camera show, well-written, with characters that everybody's interested in. But I think that the days when the top ten shows 
were, uh, you know, uh, were, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to name any shows, but I don't think those are ever going to be popular again. Just kind of yeah, generic. You know, I also think they're it, also very similar. That's another thing that hurt them is that there are these, there, there. The Simpsons kind of spawned a lot of oafish dads that are bad lovers and bad fathers and have bad jobs and they're slobs and they're stupid and they're immature and somehow they have these beautiful <laughs> girlfriends you know <laughs> and they've got these kids and they're just so uh you know but that's really a lot of shows on tv right now correct well, it's a lot of commercials too yeah, I've, I mean, been I've been noticing that, too. Yeah, every time just, you, you look see at a, the behavior on these commercials. Yeah, every time you see a commercial, it's a real dumb white guy. Yep. Um, you know, like, pass the jelly. Pass the jam! You know, it's and like... And the, the girlfriends and wives are rolling their eyes at one of yeah. the idiots. Boring! Yeah, it's like the guy... Do you remember the guy who... Uh, the, there's a there's a commercial for um, uh, Venetian blinds, and the two women are looking at the, the blinds that she just installed... And the guy is trying to light a barbecue in the back, and it right. blows up in right. his face. Right. <laughs> and that's half the commercials on TV, You've, especially if you're watching during football. Right. It'll be one of those it's right after, the, uh, yeah. yeah, just being yeah, and a really pizza. smart woman. Yeah, but you and know what the, the kids and the woman, the woman is like, oh, this idiot. I wonder how he got all the money and power. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? There's no backlash against that. Um, you know, there's no, like, a group saying, like, if you did that to Asians... Oh, there is. Like, I, there's when a group I do stand-up, nah. the, it's the United States Senate is the group of white guys that are advocating. They will go for... up, and they'll say, you could destroy it, because you always, they say, men are stupid, am I right? You know what I mean? That's what they say right on stage. <laughs> and the people cheer, you know, because the guys are yeah. on dates. But you, of course, you could never say women are stupid on stage. Right. Or you couldn't say a minority. Yeah, right. Right. No, you but you can say, say well, that. Well, no, wait a minute. Wait, hold on, wait, wait a minute. That's what Andrew Dice Clay did. What? Well, was, yeah, uh, yeah. That was his act as, you know, was... Right, but he was reviled, you know what I mean? But, uh, but uh, and it was just a joke. But these guys are really saying, like... Men are pigs. Men are stupid. You know. Right. Well, there's a seriousness to it. And yeah, they, but, and they but don't believe it. But there's no backlash. I mean, there, no, there's, there's no group of, of men. You know, if if you said. Yeah. Like if if uh, if all the commercials were uh, Asians were really stupid or Hispanics or blacks, there would be an outrage. Well, they used to be. It used to be all women. I mean, I mean that the, used to be so common. Right, the airhead, and it's like there was an outrage, and they stopped it. Right, but the difference is that in real life, right, white men in America are not vulnerable. That's the difference. I mean, if you if, if you had a commercial or you had a show that uh, made fun of or made uh, a fool of a group that is really a minority group and really vulnerable and really in danger of being mistreated by society, people would go, oh, okay. You know, but, but when it's a white man who is obviously not in any danger of being discriminated against in this in 2007. The other thing is it's yeah, celebratory. It's because it's a lie. Because uh, white men aren't dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think everyone accepts it's a lie. So, okay, uh, go ahead. Right, it's an easy it. victim because who's going to believe that? Yeah, it's, it's like go ahead right. and say it because we know it's not true. You know, it's like if my kid insults me and says I'm not as good a basketball player as him and he's four, I go, all right, whatever. Right. So I think it's a lot of that. All know? right, Norm McDonald, Sam Simon, they're both with, uh, with us. It's Conway Whitman live on 97.1 Free FM. Everybody. Look at that. Uh, if you'd like to uh, talk to uh, Sam Simon or Norm McDonald, we'll give out the phone number here. We'll take some calls. You fellas ready to take calls? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. look at you, dudes. 520 9710 and 888 520 Talk to a Jackie in Santa Monica here. Jackie, you're on 97.1 Free FM. How are you? I'm great. How are you? All right, baby. So, first of all, I have to, I have to, like, I lied. I lied about my age by two years. I'm so sorry. You're 39? I am. Okay. No, that's cool. I'm still in my sexual time, though, so. All right. Mm. All right. So, so, Norm, I have this great show idea for you. So, you're like this really hot, fun, swinging guy, and your roommate is a struggling actor, and you, you just, you're the hottest guy in town. The only problem Boring. is that... No, wait, I'm not done. Go Are ahead. still there? Yeah. But he has this hidden obsession of punching people in the kidneys. Hmm. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean he something to you? Is that based about. on something? Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, what does that mean? Know, what do you think, Norm? <laughs> <laughs> well, in in prison. <laughs> <laughs> in prison uh <laughs> in, in prison if if uh uh just say it you gotta okay. go back to smoking pr- Norm. no in prison if you want to uh if you want to uh, make love to another man right and he's resistant to him to it <laughs> You punch them really hard in the kidneys, apparently. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I just All had right, to do All right, Jackie. It. All right. Thanks for calling you, uh, jackass. What's wrong with you? Is that in your act or something? No, that's a true story. Well, so how does she, why did you guys share this? It seems like you <laughs> It seems like you knew something. that. Uh, that uh, now, how do you know that? Uh, I, I met the funniest guy in the world once. He was this guy that was going around the country trying to stop men from making love to other men in prison against their will right. that was his his like, cause cause and um because people like make jokes about it but this guy had gone into jail when he was like 16 and uh for something and and a man made love to him made, made sweet love to him against his will <laughs> and uh, this happened like night after night after night as soon as he got out and he was in for like nothing he went I think to assert his manhood because you know he, he he's been raped, right? He yeah he made sweet sweet love to a lady against her will was thrown back into jail, <laughs> oh, and so anyways he'd been in jail for twenty years and he you know men had made sweet love to him for over and over and over again, and so anyways his goal was he had he had all these signs but I asked him all these questions he was the funniest guy I mean he wasn't funny like intentionally like he wasn't like. You know, Buddy Hackett, but I mean, is a real dude. I mean, real story. A real dude, yeah. And his his goal is to wipe this out because this is not a thing that should be happening. Right. But people <laughs> allow it to happen because they go, oh, they they have it coming, they deserve it. But this guy's like, no, the bad guys are doing it to the guys that are in for like drugs or you know, oh, I, I mean, see, right. To the weak guys yeah. in the in the prison. I love the uh, reference that he's not funny like Bunny Buddy Hackett. <laughs> no, I mean, he's, he's not, not trying to be funny, yeah, you know, not like Buddy Hackett. Really yeah. right. Where yeah, did for, you meet him? He would, he did a speech in New York, and I went. And a lot of people were laughing, you know, especially the brothers and stuff. But I really felt for him. So this woman who called in, who knew that you knew that, was obviously in attendance at that lecture. Uh, she, that was like an inside I don't know joke. How she knew that. Yeah, she knew you knew that, so she must have seen the same lecture. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, that kidney thing was part of that lecture? No, I, I think I learned that. Uh, uh, I, I think I don't know where I learned. So if you, hit, if you hit a guy in the kidneys, it relaxes his uh, his can a little. Yeah. Oh boy. oh boy, I didn't know that. Jerry said he's known that for you've known that since you were a child. Yeah, I've known it for I've known that forever, man. You, really? Who? Your dad told you that? Yeah. Wow. At a young age, I learned that. Oh, that's pretty cool, dude. All right, John in Los Angeles, right? 97.1 Free FM. Oh, uh, yes. Penetrating uh, whether um, I'm working on uh, uh, my in law's uh, prison cell. All right. Nice to. Uh... It's Mr. Non Sequitur, Tim. That's who it is. Who? This is a. Um, well, he's gone, but. Yeah, he calls Frosty, Heidi, and Frank. He called KABC. That's a. Uh... And he does not. That's his act. That's his act. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really? It. That's it. Is that a voice? And uh, yeah, I believe that's. A, and how do other people treat him on the air? Do they keep him on? Uh, yes, you'd be amazed. I think that uh, some shows keep him on for quite some time. Really? Yeah, I know that sometimes you'd be on KBC for a while, and I think Frosty, Heidi, and Frank keep him on too. Really? So yeah. do you mean non or Do you mean like a flow of that's right, non- a, a, nonsense? Right, right. That's right. A flow of disconnected thoughts. Like Robin Williams. Right. All right. Well, but at least Robin Williams, there's humor in the, in the non sequitur. Uh, I mean, right? in the style. Right. Okay. Right. Obviously, he's looking for a show, an evening show around this. Time. Uh, <laughs> How about uh, Matt? You're on ninety-seven point one Free FM. Hey, Norm. Good to get to hear you again on the radio. Hey, what's up, man? I was wondering if you knew that you are a Trivial Pursuit question now. No, really. Yeah, in the pop culture edition. The question is, what former Saturday Night Live weekend update uh, host um, was fired by NBC president 
who didn't think he was funny or something like that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I but I, really, but I, I, I never really got the story behind that. I was wondering if you'd go into that. I I should, yeah. that. I you should frame the question and then the answer on another card. You should have that hanging in your apartment or something. Yeah, that'd be fun. I should get that uh, that uh, Trivial Pursuit. Is it the, what is it called? Pop yeah. Culture Edition? Culture Edition. And it comes with like a DVD and, and they, they ask you... Uh, like the final question, you have to go to the DVD, and then people fight over it. They kind of change the rules on the game. Oh, yeah. but, um, Who fired you over at NBC? Uh, Who was it? Uh, Don Olmeyer. He was the president. Oh yeah, yeah he told me that yeah, story. Yeah. He, fired, he, fired, he personally fired you. Yeah. Isn't that wild? But then a network president worry about like what shows are going to make it and. Yeah, this was kind of an odd thing because he was like the president, and this was a little tiny, tiny segment on a. Very just one of many shows show. that he ran. Yeah. How did well, you piss him off? Not a big show at all. A little show. And how 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 did you become the center of his uh, anger and attention? Uh, I don't know. Here's my problem. When I was at Saturday Night Live, because I wasn't like I didn't know. <laughs> I was stupid when I was there. Right. Because there were guys like walking around all the time. Um, how long were you on Saturday Night Live? I think like four, three or four years. Okay, Norm MacDonald is with us, also was yeah. Sam Simon. You're on for four years? Yeah, so there'd okay. be guys that would like come and like uh, say, hey, what about this? And I, honest to God, I didn't know. It turned out they were executives. <laughs> but I wasn't, it's not like, when you're in L.A. You would like, tell them off. I wouldn't tell them off. I just thought they were like Horrible pages. Idea. I'd go like, okay, yeah, you know, I'd like, that's a good idea. And then I wouldn't do it. But you'd blow them off. I wouldn't be insulting to them because I, I really did think they were pages. You know? <laughs> oh, God. I thought they were, or whatever. They worked there in some right, production assistant. But right. you didn't embrace. Yeah, you didn't they, embrace their ideas. No, I humored them and I went, "No, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do that." Because I thought they were, because that happens a lot in comedy. Like a receptionist will go, "Hey, what about this?" And you go, "Yeah, that's really that's a good idea. Thanks. You know, I'll try that out." But then you don't. So right. I didn't know uh, that guys very well. Because in New York, like you're, it's not like in L.A. Because in L.A., everybody knows. You know who the executives are out here. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, but you're supposed to. Right. <laughs> All right. All right, Norm MacDonald and Sam Simon Story. are with us. Now, I have a, a an idea for a, for um, Norm MacDonald. Uh, for a TV show, and, and now you're writing one for him right now, right? Is that right, Sam? Well, well I have an idea for one, but he doesn't like it. What's the idea? I'm not going to say. Come on. But, no, it's like a reality. It's a combination. Well, maybe Tim's new is hybrid. I, I got an idea, and and <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know maybe you like this. Good, I've been but... trying to sell this for a long time, but I think Norm would be the perfect guy for it now. Like you oh, found he... a vehicle for it, and yeah. it's Norm. This is because... not. He's not going to play Malibu Dan's part in that. Sitcom. No, no, oh, no, okay. No, because um, I, th I I I think that. Uh, Norm Macdonald has the perfect amount of uh, homophobia that this character needs. Oh, all right, good. homophobia. Yeah, um, and I'll, I'll uh, we'll take a break here and I'll come back and I'll tell you what the idea is. But I think it's a great idea for Norm Macdonald, great sitcom idea. I get him on television every week. Yeah, every week, and people watch it every week. It's uh, Conway Whitman, Norm Macdonald, and <laughs> Sam Simon are with us here. We're live on ninety-seven point one Free FM. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway Whitman Show live on ninety-seven point one Free FM. Uh, I got a, uh, a sitcom idea for, um, for Norm Macdonald. Wow. And, uh, now, like, Tim, when did, I'm, I'm sorry, did, did, have you been thinking about this for a while? I've had the idea for a long time. Yeah. But I never had, like, the right guy to pull it off. Well, I can run this. I'm, you know, I'm a, still a, a good name at the networks as far I'm, as... I'm, uh, I'm, you're, in my, you're on my top show ten runner list. And, what? You're on, my, you're on my top ten list for showrunners. <laughs> Okay. Okay. okay, let's you're, go. Okay, you're really making. Okay, <laughs> I'll pitch you on this. Well, he's being honest, I guess. Right. Tim is being brutally honest about I guess, this. Uh, <laughs> Phil Rosenthal, <laughs> Bruce Helford. I'm looking at the others. All movies. right, okay. <laughs> yeah, Brad Isaacs. Yeah, I got a couple other guys. Well, Norm, but you'll 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 insist on me, right? <laughs> I like Brad. I like oh, Brad. I said him, uh, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you? Yeah. You'll, yeah. You'll, how about that? Brad. That's All right, you're in. You'll insist on me. <laughs> okay. You'll have to have me. All right, here it is, and uh, it and it uh, again. I haven't flushed it out, but I think it's a great, great goddamn idea. Sure, sure. It's a straight guy like Norm Macdonald, who's uh, wait a straight guy or a straight guy like Norm Macdonald. I'm a straight guy like Norm Macdonald, uh, who is uh, one of his biggest fears is to be is to end up in prison. And be made love to by another man. Sweet love, yeah. sweet sweet love. Right, right. I mean, it's something you probably. It's one of the reasons you probably don't drive. Because uh -huh. if you ever drink and drive, you could end up in the can, and yeah. then you get it in the can, right? Yeah. You don't do fill out my taxes all the time. Yeah, you never want to get it, right? Yeah. Right. You never want to, uh, you know, 
get oh. get a never want to hit it with some dude, right? Right, absolutely. Right. Um, why is that? I mean, is it because of the reputation you'd have, or it, it, it just uh, the mindset is is not there? You're asking him why he doesn't want to be raped in prison? <laughs> no, no, just have sex with a guy. Why I don't want? But to? It's a real big turnoff to you, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right, see, this is the perfect guy for this. Well, he sitcom. can play it, yeah. Okay. Um, well, he's an actor; he can play anything. No, but but he but he. No, it's me. That's yeah, me. it's Norm Macdonald as the as the you know the wildly homophobic Canadian who runs a gay bar. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh -huh. I guess, you know, I like that. Do you, you like what? that? Sam? Yeah, runs a gay bar. Yeah, it's the uh, the homophobic guy who a straight dude who runs. For some a, reason, he circumstances force him to run. Well, a he knows gay he bar. can make a lot of money at it. Well, maybe he so inherited. He's a nice it. guy. He's uh, you know he, he knows a lot of guys. He knows a lot of gay dudes. And he opens up a, uh, you know, he, he starts a gay bar. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but he shows up and, I mean, he really gay goes. Gay bars and... often become gay bars, too. As they the, actually, uh, it could be one of these neighborhoods that's, uh, you know, uh, these, like, like West Hollywood was a little, I don't know if you remember, it wasn't this, this flourishing, it wasn't uh, the hub. beautiful it area. Gay, right. It's like these, these, uh, um, right. these gay men came in and they made all the houses beautiful and they started oh, yeah. these fantastic beautiful. bars and stuff. Yeah. Right. But now Norm has, uh, has owned a bar for quite some time and nobody's showing up because the whole area is gay. Oh, he decides to make it gay? Yeah. And he makes it a gay bar. But for the money though, right? That's yeah, but it takes yeah. off, but he's got disco night in there, but he's really, <laughs> I mean, he shows up in uh, his dolphin shorts and his tank top. I mean, he really, you know, tries to uh, to sell it. I think it's a great idea. That's Norm MacDonald right. owns a uh, gay bar. You know what, Tim? I, I, the idea makes me laugh because you see Norm, like, in his uh, dolphin shorts, and you juxtapose that with, like, really flamboyant gay guys, you know, very well-groomed gay men. Is that the idea? Right, exactly. Right, and then he interacts with them. And, uh, uh, yeah, okay. But he's constantly being hit on, and he can't. And, and he's, he's being and, hit on all the time? Yeah, oh, the kinds, yeah. guys are trying to, always trying to get into his shorts. <laughs> and <His> dolphin shorts, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got to turn them all down by while, while not turning them off to his bar. Right, because he's a nice guy and he's also in business. Yeah, he's a businessman, so he doesn't want to really turn them off, but he doesn't want to have sex with the guys either. So is it every week? There's a different scene where Norm is, and is that kind of the? Is that like you know? That's the focal point of the show. The show is built around that scene every week where Norm is trying to play off a, a gay advance well i think also the uh the, the <laughs> defining <laughs> the defining moment in in uh, norm turning his bar gay right is when he takes the the uh the women's sign off the women's bathroom and puts a man's sign up there <laughs> you know so there's so just he's, two he's got men's two men's room <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, what are we going to name the show tim do we have a name for it <laughs> norms i don't know well, is there a word for gays that rhymes with cheers <laughs> <laughs> same with the same writing the same logo rears there you okay. go there's, there's one <laughs> you can do that oh, i know i want not you the man. one you were thinking of sam <laughs> well it's just no i i just like, yeah, yeah you but, can say it because they call each other that queers yeah okay well no i, I don't know if, well i guess you can i mean well, you can yeah. yeah no but i don't i wouldn't well queer i yeah. Right, a queer eye for right. I think you should go men's Why does it, room. Can I ask a question? That, about, can I say, can joke. I just, like, whether it's a good idea? Why does he have to be homophobic for that show to work? Well, I say I think he has to be, I think what Tim, uh, Tim will speak for himself, it, but I think Norm has to be uncomfortable uneasy, in this not, setting. Not homophobic Why can't he just hate, be, like, unfamiliar? Not or, hatred. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be, like, a Is straight like guy who, for, for whatever it's like circumstances, Bunker? an old chunk of coal like Norm, who... For a financial reason, whatever has a gay bar. That's ju isn't that just as good? Well, no, I don't think it is because let's say like like Brian Whitman. I don't think because realistically, it means homophobic. Like I beat up gay guys. Well, no, they're your customers anyway. No, but like being on, I don't know. It's I, I think just like, one of his one I of his it's biggest a cute fears. idea. I just don't think he has to be homophobic. No, I think he. I think he. I think it's because I don't it's, think it's these predatory guys that are all after Norm. <laughs> what? It doesn't make any sense. I think there could be one guy that's attracted to Norm. I guess kind of a militant guy. Can we get one militant guy in there who's really militant guy? Yeah, you know, like a militant gay guy who's into Norm. Yeah, but he's but he's you know he's playing. Like not recruiting. <laughs> like after the norm. bar closes down, well, he's, actually, he's got like they, six or seven of his gay friends are. in there. He the plays guys, uh, poker with. I know a lot of gay guys. That, <laughs> they all go for you. <laughs> they go for straight guys. Yeah, they do. They all oh, stop. Yeah, yeah, of course they do. Just like have a, you ever been hit on by like, another guy? All the time. All just the time. like a man will go for the for, for what do you call it the you can't the lesbian get the girl. No, you can't get the girl or a lesbian girl. Yeah, right. A beautiful lesbian. The the unattainable. Right. 
So the forbidden fruit. Yeah. So the forbidden. Fruit. I think this is fruit. right. I think it's a great idea for Norm. Yeah, that's what do you think? really funny. I, I like it. Yeah. But, and but, I also think that I also think that the the tension uh, and and I think maybe the model is Archie Bunker, but crank it down a few notches because he's not because he's not really against their lifestyle. He's just kind of uncomfortable around them. Like for instance, here like a bartender. They have to listen to people's problems, right? Right. You know, and they listen to, you know, domestic stuff, you know, how are things at home and stuff. So Norm might be, you know, he, you know, he cares about his customers, but he, you know, he might like kind of not be as interested in a story about a, you know, a, a, a gay a gay uh, dispute yeah, at home, they're not yeah, getting like along. What their so. But, but I well, think also it's, he's like, guy, say, I you think can tell me, big... talk to me about it. I'm your bartender, and then it could get kind of dicey. Also, with I gay see, guys, are really, like that. Uh, no, like, you, I mean, I don't think you can. They can sexually harass you all the time <laughs> with impunity, you know? You can't do it with <laughs> women. They can charge you and stuff. You sure, know right. I mean? sure, sure. But I'm sure, like, you've seen, like, flamboyant gay guys that will just... Make jokes about wanting to, you know, right? This and that, and right? Have thing. sex with you and stuff yeah. like that, and it sort of makes you feel weird, but like a sex object. Aren't gay yeah, bars? I think it's far funny. more decadent than people realize. Well, I don't know. I think it's funny to watch Norm come, you know, out out of his uh, apartment that he lives, you know, above the bar. Walks down in his uh, He's orange top. dolphin shorts and his <laughs> right. and his well, uh, and his tank see, top Tim, and his high tops. And Why is he like, keep wearing these little no, dolphin no, shorts down well, to the gay bar? It, but here's what also we have to cast. <laughs> if he's homophobic, why is he? <laughs> because he's he's still why a businessman. He, business why is he dressing himself? Oh, oh, he's like eye candy. You have to cast. <laughs> he knows that all the guys love him. <laughs> all the guys love him, and they want to come to his bar. But so he, he's in a cage. But he's not in his dolphin shorts. You got to get a guy like, what, who's we'll like get these gay guys in there i'll put my dolphin shorts you know what i the guy love who to decorates wear the shorts the or those shorts and say juicy on the back yes <laughs> it says juicy on the back of norm's shorts and what he has is he has with him kind of a, maybe a business partner but a, the guy who decorates the bar and i'm thinking of although i don't know that his character was gay but remember bentley from the jeffersons like a oh, rap, yeah i'm thinking like He's a hilarious. like a rather proper kind of suit wearing gay guy who kind of decorates norm's bar right. and understands the customers like a clifton webb well i mean he's gone but all right we'll uh, we'll uh, talk more about the idea but it's uh, uh norm mcdonald's new uh show bentley. it's uh Straight guy, Norm McDonald owns a gay bar. Maybe it's a it's a queer bar for the straight guy. Sports bar. We're all none of the guys inside <laughs> admit to being skating. gay. But then why do they go there? We have to answer that question. Norm, it shows figure skating. Norm, but what about Norm? Is Norm so hot? We should get, we should. Norm give, thinks he's so hot to all these other guys. No, I am hot. All right, we got to take a break. It's Conway Whitman with Norm McDonald and Sam we Simon. We're live title. at ninety seven point one. Title is important. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is the Conway and Whitman Show. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. And um, there's a little uh, breaking news going on here with some uh, earthquakes going on. Yeah, man. I was in Hawaii for that, uh, on the Big Island for that big earthquake. Is that right? Yep. All right, that's uh, Sam Simon talking over there. Norm McDonald's with us as well. I don't think there was an earthquake in the Pacific. I'm going to try to find that. It looked like it was my brothers. All right, here it is. Um, I tell you where the earthquake was. It was off of uh, here it is. It was a major earthquake off the coast of Japan. Mm. It was um seven sixteen hundred miles northeast of Tokyo. Oh wow! And uh, uh, five hundred miles. I uh, hope it, it didn't was, release some dormant giant radioactive monster. No, but it was a seven point nine earthquake and. Hawaii and Alaska are under tsunami watch right now. Oh so, my gosh! Yeah, seven point nine. That's a huge. That's huge. Huge. It said eight point three up here. You know, and each number, each tenth, you know, is ten times strong. In other words, a uh, uh, eight point, uh, eight point two one is a hundred times stronger than a seven point nine. Did you know that? Uh, oh. Yeah, it grows. It grows exponentially. Yeah, I, I by did. Ten I, times. I did not know that. Yeah, it's. Uh, it, it really is a, a, a tremendous earthquake. Now, can you imagine? I remember the, the tsunami story in Banda Aceh and all of that. Can you imagine what a huge story it would be if Hawaii got zonked with a tsunami? I mean, if oh Hawaii, yeah. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. All right, let's get Norm Mac, uh, back in here. Tell him to get off the phone. 
Uh, he's probably Christ. talking to his agent. He's probably stolen your sitcom idea. Yeah, yeah, well, I'll it tell is. you what, you did put that idea out there. He wouldn't steal there. it, but... Yeah. Well, he's probably excited about it. I can he, tell he's excited about it. I think oh, he yeah. is excited because Tim put out that idea of Norm's new show with Norm owning a gay bar. And during the break, <laughs> Norm came right out of the studio and he said to me, w is there a phone? <laughs> but it wasn't a joke. He said, I need a phone. And I said, right here, Norm. I mean, whatever you need, just dial nine and call. And he's been in there ever since. I think I heard him say, I, I think I heard him say over the phone, don't worry about Tim. We don't need Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. Listen, you know, as long as uh, Tim would like to watch the show, well, that's I, can, probably I, I, like, I can be in the audience watching. It, I don't care. Um, but like it, Lovitz uh, could have been listening and has already sold it. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. But um, it, you know, well, ideas, Lovitz would be good on the show. Yeah, but but ideas in, in Hollywood are a dime a dozen. Oh, you know, everybody what? knows that Hollywood ideas are a dime a dozen. But not the perfect marriage of an idea. No, and the a perfect performer. guy is Norm McDonald doing this show. But you can't the do this chunk without of coal, Norm. The old chunk of coal, Norm MacDonald, <laughs> owns a gay bar. <laughs> now, where is he? Is he still on the phone? Yeah, is he yeah. is he working the idea? They're negotiating. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Uh, here are the uh, uh, phone numbers if you have a uh, title for the show. Because titles up? are very important, right? I guess, yeah. Yeah. For for a show, 520 Don't call in with the Norm MacDonald show or something well, like that. Well, that's been right. done also. And 888-520-9710. Well, did it like everyone, right? All right, let's talk to uh, let's talk to a Clay in Riverside here. Clay, you're on ninety seven point one Free FM. How are you? Hey guys, how you doing? All right, dude. Um, bottoms up. <laughs> That's a pretty right. good idea. Okay. Got the double entendre. Yeah. Bottoms up. Yeah. Is <laughs> he serving drinks and obviously? Uh, that's All pretty right. good, You've got dude. The, whole, the whole thing there. All right. Hold on one sec. We're going to send you something for that. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, $100 gift certificate to Rhodesian Springs yeah, man. Massage Therapy in West oh. Hollywood. Uh, stop, breathe, and relax, everybody. Are you serious? Yeah. Log on to 971freefm.com to get a $100 gift certificate to Rhodesian Springs for half off. Are you serious? Yeah. Now, uh, serious, Doug. Now, when you get a massage, you're, you're, you're worth $150, $200, 300000000 million. I don't like them. I don't do them. You, people come to the house to do it? I used to have, uh, there used to be um, a masseuse, but. No more? No, I don't, I don't like it. No? What turns you against it? I don't like it. It creeps me out. You don't like people touching you? Not strangers. <laughs> Now, do you have a, a private plane? No. But do you, you charter? when you, when you, you I have chartered planes, but I, I prefer to fly commercial. I, I don't like private planes. I don't think they're safe. Right. Oh, you don't? You don't think uh, you see that? No, one just crashed uh, yeah. in uh, Van Nuys today. Yeah. Mm. Now, are you like a uh, are you a frugal guy, or, you, are you, uh, or are you, you throw money away? I, I'm not too frugal. Uh, how'd you do in gambling this year? Uh, I was doing great until the last couple of weeks, and it's gotten kind you of got sour. Killed? Yeah. And do, did you lose for the season? Well, it's not over. Well, the season. When does the season begin and end it for ends again? It's the Super Bowl. Yeah, but I mean, oh, it's right. it's it's getting to the end. I mean, for the regular season. No, I can still pull it out. Were you but I mean, I was ahead until two weeks ago for the season. How much were you ahead? Not much, but ten grand. Less. Oh, really? But I, you know, I I bet I don't gamble like I used to. I bet. What was the most you were up during the season? Do you remember? Maybe. Uh, One hundred and fifty. No. What? 150 grand? No, no, no. I don't. I don't play like that anymore. I bet. I bet five or six bets at two thousand dollars a bet. That's all I do. Okay. Every now, weekend. now, what is the what is the biggest single bet you've ever made in your life? Um, on the Super Bowl, um, uh, the Tampa Bay Oakland Super Bowl in San Diego. Uh, I was in Vegas, but uh, I don't know where it was. But I, maybe right. it was in San Diego. But I won 130,000 on that. And is that what you put down? You put down 100 to win 130? I bet, um, yeah, basically. I also bet a bunch of the propositions. And you won them all? I won them all. It was, <laughs> it was big, just the greatest day big, ever. Week, big uh, weekend. And then, it. yeah, and then I was ahead that year, and I said, I was up like, do you give me? Oh, no, wait, hold on a sec. I, I want to talk about this 130 grand. When they, when you won 130 grand, they give you it in cash. Well, it was spread out. Like I was ahead. Uh, I, uh, some of it was from the casino, and then some of it was from the bookmaker. Oh, I see. You spread it around. Yeah. All right. Then why do you do that? Just to. Uh... I did it because I was ahead with the bookmaker, and I, I went on a tear in the playoffs, and I said, whatever I'm ahead, I'm going to bet on the Super Bowl. 
that's pretty all cool. right. And so, but I didn't bet everything. But then I was up in Vegas, and this is something. This is when I say I I, I didn't used to be very disciplined, and this is what used to kill me. It's like I bet one unit, one unit, one, unit, and then I bet like a crazy amount on another game. But I was winning at the pits in the casino games, and every time I I had money, I would bet more on the. Tampa Bay. Right. Now, but for gamblers like yourself, and we're talking to Sam Simon, Norm McDonald's uh, on the phone still. He's working that idea. But for gamblers, they say that, that the best bet in the last 10 years was taking Tampa Bay over the Raiders. Do they say that? Yeah. I could. This is one of those cases, and I could have lost a bet. Like, first. Right. Um, but it's, you know, for the. Uh, again, I think it's a great idea. Generally, because... titles of shows, I don't think, should be jokes because they grow tired. You know what I mean? Right. right. If you call, are you talking about calling it like fruities or something? <laughs> yeah, it's like, you remember uh, Steven Spielberg's amazing stories? Yeah. They yeah. had to be amazing, right? Yeah, right. The expectations high. are pretty high. <laughs> yeah. Here comes another amazing story. Wait, now, do you have a. Are you and Fred. Like, Fred Stoller would be a great. Uh, like the only guy that's still in the bar when it changes. I the only told, I told regular him I customer. I bet you I have told some. Him I had to yeah, run I mean that, that by Tim. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to promise the guy. What? I told him I had to run that by Tim. That's what he said. Because he said I could be just a guy. Like. But you know what? Th that's a great idea, though. You have like the five or six regular customers who say, "F it, I'm still going." That's right. The yeah. old school guys. Yeah, 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 Even yeah. though it's a gay bar. Uh, I'm gonna still, you know, be in there watching the game. And shouldn't there be one guy who doesn't know it switched to a gay bar? Yeah, that's hilarious. Like the Mr. Furley character who yeah, thinks yeah, that John Ritter's yeah. character is gay. Um, like there's a guy who doesn't know. He just goes all the time. Yeah, he's just drunk. Also, like, I, th I like think the guy in Cheers. I was like, talking to Sam during the commercial <laughs> break. Uh, it'd be interesting if you had a wife, and you had to keep the fact that your wife uh, knows about the fact that it's a gay bar. Plus, you had to keep your wife out of there. Oh yeah, you know you got to. Sam warming to this? Oh yeah, yeah Sam. Sam idea. loves it, man. What do you mean? Just because I'm trying to like bring a little more reality to it. Maybe uh, you have like a teenage kid too. You don't want to, you know, you want to throw the ball around with him at home, but you don't want him to come to the, the gay bar. Yeah, but yeah. But he comes I to the gay bar. He's very comfortable around everybody, and that bothers you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so his son, the son is a, like a like a closet gay. The fifteen year old oh. son loves the bar. Oh uh, yeah, that could be. Yeah. <laughs> Norm probably doesn't want to. Norm probably doesn't want to be married. <laughs> what? Why not? Yeah, maybe. What? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he's, he's, well, I think that's kind of a good angle because wait, there's no, always wait, wait, yeah, wait, because, wait, 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 wait. He's always wait. trying to explain to straight women why he owns a gay bar. I think that's kind of a good angle. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. He's constantly. Uh, oh, if I'm not married, you mean? Right. Yeah, not married. I'm sorry. Oh, Sam. I thought. You, yeah, then no, I'm, I then, agree with you, but I know the norm or doesn't or like a, having a love interest. No, I know, but in this situation, if I'd have to be divorced or have a child or something to prove that, like, I'm not, you know, one of those guys that like the grass and the screen. Norm, the there's side. not a person in America that looks at you that thinks you're. Anything but as straight as an arrow. I know, but I think you don't it's need like a beard in the show. No, I know. Yeah, but I think it's interesting to have a like a sixteen or seventeen year old kid who who loves the bar. But Norm know? doesn't know. Does Norm know that his son loves the bar? Oh yeah, he's, oh, uh, you know, he's, he, he uh, and Norm. It really bothers Norm that the kid might really oh, love the bar. Oh, what if he has a yeah, gay yeah. son? And it's no, the no, son's the idea, like, and it's, a, it's bringing. Because like I like the Pac-Man game. I'm like, why? <laughs> You're playing Mrs. Pac-Man. <laughs> Yeah, you're playing Ms. Pac-Man. I see the ribbon in her hair. <laughs> that's not blinky, pinky, hinky, hinky, and dot. <laughs> there it is. See, that's a, there's a, there's a, there's a scene. There's a, there's a... And he's got, also Norm's got a, uh, you know, from the old bar, he's got the old uh, Doberman Pinscher, the watchdog from the old bar. Right. But now he's got bows in his hair, and he's all, you know, f uh, fluffed up. This is not. <laughs> now, should they I have to take a junkyard dog and, like, fluff him up down there <laughs> so that the gays will warm everything. to him? He's got a junkyard dog. <laughs> <laughs> Norm owns the bar, but should there be like a like you did, Sam, in Cheer? Should there be a coach character who's the bartender, like maybe kind of a curmudgeonly straight guy who was the bartender when it was a straight bar, and he's been held over now for the gay phase? I think that's sort of like what Norm, I, or that's Norm's that, character. Yeah, that's sort of Norm's character. But you were talking about interviewing the. Um you know, the the for the new bartender when he that's a that seems like a good right. little that would montage. Be a good I'd be like, 
not gay enough, you know. Well, I, 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 th I think, uh, again, Norm MacDonald and uh, Sam Simon with us. Um, when you play... And you would ask him, do you find me attractive? And that would be like... It also might be uh, interesting to, to not? see, you know, like when the drink special goes on at the bar, they play that uh, typical song, YMCA. It might be interesting to see Norm actually do that dance. Oh, yeah, we have to see that once or once. They <laughs> don't do <laughs> that. In, you no, think, like, like, these guys are be, actually dancing to too, YMCA? Like, it's a, it's a, but it, it's what? Sure. what? No, but by the way, that? that's the scene. They do that at children's birthday parties. They don't no. do it in gay bars. That's going to be the scene that tanks the show. That'll be the scene that the critics just, I mean, cannot believe it. We have a kind of a choreographed number where Norm is leading the all the patrons in a real choreographed version of YMCA and the critics just go that like they, they just hate it. hate it and they just s all over it and they say you know watching Norm McDonald <laughs> Wait, do where a choreo are you going with this? Well, no, I mean but you'd have to that trying would, to sabotage no, the show. I'm not trying to sabotage Don't kill the show. <laughs> no, but we need the money. But I think we do need I think we do need a dance scene for Norm. I mean just oh, one I, where you know I mean like in a John Travolta kind of Saturday night fever but what if like when I'm interview I go to interview the These things the, are all kind of the archaic. bartenders <laughs> in the in the in the pile, and I'm going. We got to get a, the fruitiest guy there is, you know. And then like someone says, you know, look, when you're interviewing them, I you can't ask them that. Like that's against like oh, yeah. civil rights or something like that. So I have to get around it, you know. I have to figure out a way to figure their fruits without coming straight out. Right. And when you like, assemble a panel, them. you assemble a panel to try to uh, to sit in on the meeting or to kind of overhear the meeting to kind of determine. And that's that. You know. yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So he has he has no gaydar. Right. Or maybe right, yeah. I just Perfect. get up and I like bend over, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. With my dolphin shorts and I check the guy out and like some slide yeah. is coming out. Go, you perfect, you know? No, but what you do is in the scene, you bend over and you look real quick. It's like you, know, you bend yeah, over, yeah, look yeah. real quick, See, bend the, over, look real quick. Well, see, he might think that's a plan, but any person would say, Norm, you bending over in your dolphin shorts is not the litmus test. <laughs> I like it. It might be revolting. Uh, no. No. Oh, be <laughs> I've seen you in dolphin shorts. No, but what Tim's saying is whether or I not. I understand what Tim what is saying. It's like, funny. You might I think feel that. that, that that's yeah, you that. might think that. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like so guys, then you find like out. These guys that go like. Look, I have nothing wrong with gay guys. Just don't let, you know, just as long as they keep their hands off me, you know, and they're 60-year-old men, then, you know, a, a young gay guy's not going to suddenly grope. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't understand. I do understand. Yeah, I agree with you. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Norm McDonald, Sam but Simon are with us. both ways, too, because I'm, I'm a good-looking guy. Yeah, absolutely. Right, you can See, do it that's way. the thing. He's, he's like, so vain. <laughs> yeah, I think also, uh, well, let's talk to Abe, uh, Abel here. Uh, Abel, you're on 97.1 Free FM. Hey, how you doing? Hey, dude. Hey, can I say hi to Norm? Sure. Go ahead. Hey, Norm. How's it going? The star of Bottoms yeah. Up. He's doing well. He's right here. <laughs> that's right. Fantastic. Anyway, uh, I had a good name. In fact, it's funny you guys are talking about this tonight because I, I actually did do that. I didn't own the bar, but I'm a straight guy, and I worked at a gay bar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty fun. Lots of tips. But anyway, uh, title for the show, uh, kind of a plan of words, just one of the gays. <laughs> you know, because he's just one, one of the guys. Them, pretending right. to be anyway. So do you have, like, funny stories from there? Oh, man, I have an insane amount of stories. Would you like one? Yeah. Well, you know, okay. you'd probably take a meeting with this guy, Norm. Oh, yeah, this might be the other uh, you know, know, creative well, I mean, consultant. A lot of the things he's saying are true. <laughs> uh, they, when I got hired there, and that's the thing, is I was in the military, so I had to put that down on my application, on my resume, and I saw them like kind of look at each other after I handed them my resume that had, you know, military all over it, and they were like, they just looked at me, and they were like, uh, you know this is a gay bar, right? And I'm like, yeah, I know. They're like, okay, okay, you're hired. And uh, the guy pretty much told me I was hired because uh, I was eye candy. Yeah, and uh, military. And, yeah, oh yeah. Did a lot of guys and hit on you. A lot, yeah, a lot. A lot. Were it, you afraid of your uh, your co-military friends coming in and seeing you and no, killing see, you? That's the thing is that I had a friend who was in the military who actually was gay or you know was he is and. uh I asked him, I'm like, hey, because he was really familiar with, uh, I guess, the laws and stipulations of uh, gays are gays who are in who are in the closet are also in the military. There's this thing called the Servicemen's Legal uh, Defense Network, and they primarily focus on, I guess, gay issues within right, the military. Right, right. And apparently, um, it's not, you know, it's not wrong to be in a place in a, in a homosexual bar or 
oh, or I a gay see. bar or the right. workout one. All However, right. Right. you know, if you have a commanding officer who... Is this the or, funny story that Norm you know, asked you if you had? What's that? Yeah, all right. So uh, uh, you got any, any uh, funny stories of what happened in the Oh, room? yeah. Yeah, here we go. Hopefully uh, longer than that one. The, I was closing the bar. It was, it was more of a nightclub, really. So uh, I had I used to call them fan clubs and uh, with these groups of guys who would just tip me really well throughout the night. And towards the end of the night, uh, these, I, I get these guys around the beers. And then one of them goes, hey, you didn't put a cherry in my drink. And, you know, I was really in a hurry to close down my register. I was like, okay, sure. So I reached for some cherries. I was like, wait a minute. You guys ordered beer. And the guy's like, yeah, but I want a cherry. And I, I kid you not. He, like, leaned forward and, like, opened his mouth like a, like a baby chick waiting for a regurgitated food from his mother. And I was like, uh, I go, dude, I'm not feeding this to you. And he's like, <laughs> and, he, and he goes, come on. I'm like, oh, all right, you know, I'm game. So I, I threw the cherry in, stem and all. And then he spit the cherry out at me. Oh, God. I mean, you know, he spit the stem out at me. All right, all right, hold on one second, dude. That might be a... Uh... A good guy to talk to, man. Absolutely. So that's it. getting his phone number? A couple of ideas yeah, for well, the It might be good that, I'm, that I come from a military background. Oh, yeah. But yeah. you could be an Army brat. Your yeah, character yeah, could yeah. be an Army brat. Yeah. Right, so we good. have now Bottoms Up, <laughs> which is one uh, one of the gays, just one of the gays. Yeah. And uh, obviously, you can take out the just one. You don't need the just. We don't need the just. Okay, so one of the gays. Norm, All right, Norm, uh, we, Norm. it is the Conway Women Show sitting in with us tonight. Uh, Norm McDonald <laughs> and Sam Simon. We're live yeah, at ninety-seven point one Free FM. Sam, let you go. From Saturday Night Live, also the Norm Show, and Sam Simon, who has produced. Uh, Lots of TV, including The Norm Show, Cheers, Taxi, yeah. Simpsons, Tracy Allman. Tracy Allman. Now, the idea that you threw out there about Norm working in a gay bar or owning a gay bar, this is his return to television. Sam, uh, your friend Norm seems to really be into this idea. He's I mean, totally into this idea. Yeah, I think it's a uh, good idea for him. Um, he is. He's out there making calls and really getting into it. Yeah. Now, uh, is, you think this is something we could do? We could actually... Uh, uh, can you? I think, could you sell that on on Norm's uh, uh, popularity? On oh, Norm alone? Are you? Of course. Uh, they're all dying to work with Norm. Yeah, because Norm is the best man. Okay, is uh, when nobody plays, uh, you know, completely uh, sort of disgusted and pissed off about crap like like Norm McDonald. <laughs> Now, look, how at, do we... look at him, look at him. Now, that's the guy, it's like the odd couple. Yeah, like, like a schlump. Like uh, <laughs> Oscar, look. <laughs> now, how, at this point, obviously, Sam, with uh, Tim, you know, throwing this idea out there and this flurry of activity, I, I mean, Tim Conway Jr. would have to get, like, a creator's credit or something. Oh, I'll get a piece of that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but, there's, but see, I'm not worried about throwing it out he'd because get nobody could put... he'd get, he'd get He'd get more money than... Than God? Than Sam, I think he deserves it. Is that right? Wow. Wow. Is that right? Wow. Wait, yeah. wait a minute. Were I, we was, comparing not, I him? was not comparing you to him. No, yeah, I don't. Yeah, nobody wow. said that. We just said uh, Tim is going to get a lot of money. <laughs> oh, okay. I, don't know. I wasn't asking all. in context or comparison to hey, anyone else. Here's, here's well, a, but uh, why did you jump to uh, <laughs> Sam is not going to do it? <laughs> that seemed to be there. No, seems to be I heard an a issue story there. about a guy that wrote this su very successful TV show. And then uh, the other guy, the guy who created it got nothing, and then the other guy got all the the so money and Navy? The created. No, so, no, one that's on right now. Uh, is that right? Oh, Jesus. Um, Most popular sitcom on TV. Oh, yeah, I, I know it. I know the one you're talking you about. Do, right? Have you been to... Uh, that's the name of the show. <laughs> all right. Um, but here's... Um, here, here, you've been to a bar, and you've seen like... Uh, I've like, been to gay bars. Whoa! <laughs> Wacko! By the way, there's Norm's hook. That's his. That's uh -oh. his. What you're talking about, Willis? Do it again, Norm. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. Whoa! <laughs> that should be the name of the show. Whoa! And once an episode, that comes out because somebody somebody says like some one of the one of the old Brian. That's a very astute. Uh, yeah. 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 One of the old school guys. He just made Norm Rich one of, and gave him a catchphrase. <laughs> one of the guys who is there from the old days when it used to be a straight bar, yeah, yeah. And one of the old school guys who still hangs around, like one week he says, you know what? 
I don't just like the way this place looks, but I'm really comfortable here. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> or you go into the men's room and just immediately come out. Whoa! Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Opens the door. <laughs> right, just a shot of Norm opening the men's room door. Okay, so what were you getting? Right, Sam's so, been to a gay right, bar. No, 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 listen. If you've been to a, uh, a bar that's not necessarily gay, you've just been to a bar no, where... No, he's been to a hardcore gay right, bar. Let's, but but let me, I, I'm just talking a regular bar. Bar, yeah, and you see a, a man and a woman who are together, and they've had too much to drink, and they start arguing about stuff, right? Because right. when guys right. and girls drink, uh, they they don't really their buzz doesn't increase at the same level. Some guy get the guy gets too buzzed, and the girl's not buzzed enough, or vice versa, right. and they have a clash. Yeah, that's a good. And so, and they'll start arguing, and sometimes they'll you know like push or, you know, or grab the guy or whatever. Sure. But when Norm sees two guys in a relationship in the bar arguing, he calls the cops immediately because that always uh, escalates yeah. into a fight and they bust the place up. <laughs> <laughs> you see what he's saying? His homophobia is uh, like, wait a minute, two guys are, are getting into a fight. I know where this is going. They're yeah. going to break the pool sticks. He doesn't see it as two like uh, lovers having a... He sees it as... As a bar fight. As a bar fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he, sees yeah. it, he sees all love quarrels, even like between two gay guys, as a potential bar <laughs> fight. <laughs> Now, what about the decor for so, the... For so the, even if a guy more. is like, uh, you know what, I don't like the way you, you know, I don't like that shirt on you. Well, you know what, I, my mom bought me this shirt. He's on the phone with 9-11. He's like, I know where this is going. Well, and he does that catchphrase, like when a guy really insults another guy and he goes, I don't like that shirt, Norm gives the, whoa. <laughs> then it gets real quiet and these guys face off. Now, now what about the what about the decor? Maybe like there's a policeman that I always call that comes, he's like, ah. An old Irish policeman? Yeah, he doesn't want to get involved. But everybody in the bar thinks it's a stripogram. <laughs> Every time the cops show up. <laughs> yeah. They go, where's the construction worker in the Indian? <laughs> the cowboy. And the cop is always trying to make the point that he's a real cop. And he's always just frustrated and he walks out. Yeah, like and every time the cop comes in, the music starts. There, and he's like, no. <laughs> but he makes his point. Like over the top, he like shoots somebody. <laughs> <laughs> now, we, we, if we shoot somebody, it should be a straight guy. <laughs> Right, you don't want to get into trouble. Right, you have to shoot right, one of the straight guys. Right. Yeah. All right, uh, Norm McDonald, Sam Simon are with us. Let's talk to a uh, Will in Hollywood. You're ninety seven point one Free FM. Hey guys, how you doing? Hey dude. All right, so the, the name of the bar has got to be something that was jockish before, like the shortstop or or line drive. But w the beginning of the show, you you see the name of the bar. And it kind of burns out, and the only sign that stays lit underneath it is parking in the rear. So, <laughs> so that's kind of like the thing where it changes over, but it's got to be some jock name at first to make it like it was all macho, but now it's parking in the rear. That's pretty good. Dude. <laughs> that's funny. Wait, Sam, all right. Sam's not. Hold on one sec. We're going to give you a uh, pair too of easy. tickets. Is it too easy, Sam? The jokes are too I, easy. <laughs> I'm just, i got to say, Norm, I've never seen him more enamored. <laughs> Of a concept, and that every idea he just runs with and is delighted oh, it's, by. I think it's great. This is a very. Oh, anyway, dude, we're going to give you uh, Will, I, a pair of tickets to uh, tell you right. I'm not saying it's not funny. What? Do you understand it? Parking in the rear? <laughs> Yeah, I get it. Okay, okay. Yeah, but you know what? It, it's like a big, like, let's say the money tree in in, uh, in Burbank or in Toluca Lake, right? Right. And the big sign is the money tree. And then the small little sign underneath the money tree is parking in the rear. And it flickers. The neon's like right. flickering. But the big sign of the money tree, Everything he just... Everything else changes. No, yeah, no, I no, get he it. Just, he just doesn't light it up. Okay. <laughs> oh, I see. That sign The just, only sign yeah, that's lit up is a yeah. little tiny one parking <laughs> in the rear. Uh, a pair of lift tickets to Telluride, mm -hmm. Colorado. Log on to 971freefm.com to get a great deal on an exclusive free FM... Tell you ride ski package. I'm gonna ask. It seems that um, if I may it goes scratch the will, right, the will of Hollywood. Yeah. If I may scratch the surface here, it seems Norm is very excited about this idea that Tim threw out there earlier. Sam Simon, what I'm getting as an outsider here, watching the the uh, interaction between the two of you, is that you have been pitching Norm on ideas that he has been lukewarm. You're to. exactly right. Yeah, he's very. <laughs> I don't want to say fussy because Norm's all homophobic and. <laughs> 
But I'm they, sensing that you're but, almost resenting that he's Oh, no, so, I don't resent it at all. I'm amazed. I'm just going like, oh, my God. Like, what was the, you know, what was the, 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 the. What did it? Gay bar. Gay bar. Norm in a gay bar. There it, it is. Was always, you know. Well, it was right I, in front of you. It was right yeah, there. Yeah. No, it was in, right in front of Tim. All right, let's talk to uh, <laughs> Debbie in Orange County. You're on 97.1 Free FM. Hi, guys. It's hey. Debbie from Orange County. Oh, this is the chick that wants to have sex with, uh, with, Bri with uh, Brian Whitman. <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, man. Yeah. Now, I you met you out at the Home Depot. Right, not me. You went and met Tim out at the Home Depot, right? That's was not right, at, Conway. Okay. Right, 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 and right. Was out. He was napping that day, I believe he said. And you, he said you're in your depression mode. I'm sorry. Oh, no, always. Yeah, I said uh, it's Saturday. I went to Home Depot on Saturday, last Saturday. And they said, where's Brian? I said, well, it's Saturday. He's uh, in thick with depression. Right, Saturday's a big, <laughs> yeah, it's a big depression day. Right. Oh. So anyway, uh, Debbie, the... the um... And this, you, you know her? No, not just... No, but she said she would sleep with Brian Whitman. Oh, would so, sleep. Sight with unseen. I did. Right, uh, but I would like to get a picture at ConwayandWhitman.com of Debbie. I mean, that's not too much to ask, is it, Tim? You would like a picture? Yeah. Okay. That's right, Tim. Hey, Matt took a lot of pictures out there. <laughs> no, no, that's right, Tim. I would like a picture. This, this wants a picture. <laughs> that's right. Matt? This right here. <laughs> this okay. would like to see a picture. <laughs> Is that right? Um, yeah. The goddamn right. This would like a, to see a picture. <laughs> All right. We can do that. What do you uh, think of, of uh, what? Brian looks of like? What? Food? Can you describe? No, no. <laughs> this, this, <laughs> this in front of you. This with the the sweatpants. And but what the, do you want a picture of? A sandwich? No. This wants a photo. You want a photo of her? Yeah. We can do that. All right. All right. Hey, Mac was out there taking all kinds of photos. I'm sure he's got plenty of them. All right. All right, hold on one second. we got to take a break, then we'll come back and talk to uh, Debbie here. She wants to sleep with Brian Whitman. It's Conway Whitman sitting uh, in with us as Sam Simon and Norm McDonald. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. Oh, I didn't know that. All right, it's Conway Whitman. We're live on 97.1 Free FM. Sitting here with Norm McDonald and Sam Simon. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, what we're going to give away right here. The, the first two people to call 520-9710 uh, or 888-520-9710. As long as you have a motorcycle, you need a motorcycle for this, you're going to get a pair of tickets to this Saturday's American Chopper free ride. Take a ride with the boys from American Chopper oh, I like to an exclusive song. premiere party. American Chopper is now on the Learning Channel. Catch new episodes starting January 18th. At 9 p.m. So um, get out there with that motorcycle. You going to be in that ride tomorrow? Uh, yes, I will be in the ride. You know, Tim, you I do. never, I never miss a uh, cycling event. All right. All right. Norm McDonald's with us. Also, uh, Sam Simon. Always nice to see these uh, two uh, fellows around. Well, they're huge studs. And we have Debbie from Orange County who uh, wants to have sex with Brian Whitman. What a night, man! Hey, Debbie. I'm here. All right. Now, how old are you, Debbie? I'm 36. 36. Now, Debbie, you're not looking. Am I too old? It, what? No, you're Am not. I too old? No, you're fine. Huh. Okay. Um, it's we're not looking for well, you're not looking for a relationship. This is not something where we would have sex and then you would be calling and hey, calling. Hey, Debbie, when Brian's making sweet love to you, what voice would you like him to to use? I like it. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Hold on one sec. Um, Here you go, there. Hey, Debbie. Yeah. So you don't want to get in a relationship with Brad Pitt. I mean, uh, Brian Whitman. <laughs> you just want to have sex with him, right? Yeah, a little bit of fun. Sure. A couple of glasses of wine. Wow. What, if, what about oh, if, well, What well. if he drives down to Orange County tonight? Oh boy. Here that you go, Debbie. Thank you, dear. <laughs> All right, so that Debbie, how tall are you? Well, Tim, you met her at Home Depot. I know. Let me let me think. I if I remember her, I'll let me I'll, I'll I'll try to describe her. Yes, please, Tim. She's about five foot four. Oh, is that right? No, I'm five foot six. Five oh, six. That's better. Long, um, blondish hair. Yeah, my hair is dark, but I've got it. You know, the, the in it with yeah. highlights. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. That's right. And she's got um, pretty big breasts. I remember. I think they're like C's or D's. It's a C. C. Now, may I ask if they are implants? Implants or they are natural? Oh no, they're natural. Oh wow! And she. Um, oh well. She have eyes. She's, she's tan. <laughs> she have eyes. She's been. In the, she's been in the sun. <laughs> And she seems to be a, uh, a like a happy person. She's not depressed and you know crazy. Right. That's a huge bitch. Right. And you weigh about one thirty-five. 
Highway 137. All right, I'm pretty oh, good with that. See, I don't like that yes. you said 135 and shit. No. Well, she's being honest. 137. No, but she's like, she wanted man. She wanted credit for those two pounds. All right, now, Debbie, look, I mean, I got to be honest with you. Uh, you know, is you know, is uh, for as much fun as Tim will make of me, I can't commit right now to having sex with you. I have to see what you look like, and I don't think that that's unusual or strange. I would Jesus have. Jesus Christ. That's fine. I would have to see, and I think it's only fair. <laughs> That I see what That's you. That's all you care about is what she looks like. Well, she's described a totally physical relationship. Right. I mean, with no other. Uh, well, I mean, you're sitting here with with about nine holes in your shirt with an ink stain on it. <laughs> You've got Adidas uh, pants with buttons all the way down, so in case you have too many pizzas, you can they can just pop off your body. <laughs> Uh, unshaven, <laughs> and, and you just went through an MRI today. Go I mean, easy on Whitman. Go I mean, easy on Whitman. This is not, uh, you know, Roger Staubach in the height of his career. <laughs> but but uh, also, Tim, what, what I just I, had an MRI of his brain, and he's still going like, well, i got to go slow with this <laughs> chick on the phone. <laughs> like, you gotta, like, you can, <laughs> tomorrow you could find out. Like, you missed your last chance. <laughs> Yeah, if, if they said you were going to die on Monday, you still want a photo? <laughs> well, things might be different on Monday. You have to tune in and find out. But I think it's not unreasonable, Tim, again, and despite all of the attacks and the and the personal insults that this will uh, raise, I, I, I will insist on a photo, despite all of the personal ad hominem gratuitous okay. attacks on my character and my appearance. All right. Now, Debbie, how does that make you feel? Shirt. And my wardrobe. Debbie? Well, that, that's perfectly fine. And okay. I will and send him a photo. Right, I'm sure, Debbie, with, with great respect to you, and you sound like a lovely woman, I'm sure you're not surprised by the, by me wanting to see a photo. That's not odd to no. you. Right. I understand. Not at all. I will send you a photo. Mm -hmm. And as I was telling you, Mac took a lot of photographs out there. I'm sure he's got quite a few photos of me out there. At the I'm sorry, who, who took a lot of photos? Mac did. One of your street crew. Oh, Dave. Uh, oh, Don, Mac. Mac. Yes. Macadocious. Yes, Mac. Adam. <laughs> Adam McAdocious. He's a nice guy, isn't he? Yeah, he was a lot of fun out there. Yeah, right. Balloons. Hey, if, right, right, if, right um, you are, dear. If you and, uh, and Brian hook up and do have sex, will you come on the air and uh, give us a breakdown of what his move is and, well, and how good he is? Well, I would have that was fine. That if, way, you if know what, I'm... Read on it, I would, yes. You know what, Debbie, to be candid with you, I'm confident enough that <laughs> I would that would be okay, Tim. Is that right? <laughs> are you serious? See, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like that. Well, what is she going to say that I'm a klutz? Well, because you, you, know, you, know, you, know yes. you know my favorite thing to do during <laughs> sex. What's that? Watch no TV. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Just sit there. <laughs> All right, Debbie. So you right, hold, on hold on, and you Debbie. get the photo over here to ConwayandWhitman.com. <laughs> That's Conway and Whitman. Don't come. How long does it take to do that? You should do that. You what? Can do no, it. but I mean, can't you instantly get a picture? In you this would think. Age? I mean, you would think. <laughs> Sam, it's a very valid point. You yeah. would think. All right, when are we going to 54 here or 52? What do you got there? Uh, 51. Huh? 50? No, Jerry. 53 today. 53. Okay. Ah, 53. All right, let's talk to uh, Matt in San Diego. He's got a question for Norm. Hello, Matt. Matt. Uh, hello, hello, Conway with, Whitman. What's going on? Hey, you're on with Norm McDonald and Sam Simon. Hey, I, I have a great opening scene for uh, Norm McDonald and his new show before I get to the title of my show. Perfect. Okay. Um, Norm goes back to school, and he's sitting in math class, and the professor is like, um, excuse me, I'll be right back. I have to, I've to. i been constipated. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, in, in five minutes, he comes back and goes, hey, don't worry about it. I worked it out with a pencil. Now, classmates? Get out, get, get out your pencil. It's time to take a test. And Norm goes, hey, uh, excuse me, professor, uh, can I borrow your pencil? <laughs> Everybody does, Norm. <laughs> <laughs> and so he fails math class. That's great. And That's then great. The, the, the name of the bar would be the square root. <laughs> All right, dude. Thanks for calling. <laughs> that guy's pretty amusing. Really man. thought it through. The square root. Yeah. It would be more of a math show. What the square root? <laughs> That's not gay at all, is it? I don't know what that is. I think it's about the, yeah, it's the math professor. It is odd. Uh, Jack in Manhattan Beach, uh, 97.1 Free FM. Norm McDonald's back with the square hey. root. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, boys. Oh, boy. You got an idea for the uh, name of Norm's <laughs> bar. All right. I think you should go with a sports bar type theme and either call it Pitchers and catchers. Tight end. The, the tight end. Ugh. Mm. Wide receiver. Or Norm's Hall of Flame. 
<laughs> that guy could be a great character actor on the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, get you. Uh, all right, uh, gang, we got to uh, get out of here. But uh, we'd like to uh, thank Norm McDonald for coming by. He's going to be at the uh, Phoenix Improv. He's going to be up all night. Is that right? of this, the things about this show. Uh, yeah. Well, he might be calling Tim. You have Tim's number if you need to call him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna work on. Uh, uh, on some yeah, man. Ideas. No, thank you. Going through the Screen time. Actors Guild book. Maybe Sam and <laughs> I work the on it. Next time we can drop by. Oh, we'll perfect. Have some, hey, do you have the Screen Actors Guild book at home? What is that? Oh, I, I, <laughs> you probably do though, don't you, Sam? I probably did it one time. <laughs> And what does it have? Just photographs? It's all headshots of everyone in Screen Actors Guild. That oh, has they still produce that? Eight dollars to and nowadays. It's probably online. Yeah. All right, uh, January twenty eighth, you're going to be the Phoenix Improv. Yeah, the Phoenix Improv in uh, in uh, Arizona. Phoenix. Yeah. Hey, well, the one, one in Arizona. Night? The Phoenix. Phoenix huh? One night only. No, for four nights, three nights, uh, and then on Sunday. So hey, is that nights. Super Bowl weekend? Huh? No, it's the, I no, think no, February first, no, first, first February. weekend of February. Yeah, it's not till February. All right, thanks for coming by, Norm McDonald, everybody, and Sam Simon. Uh, we will uh, be back on the air on Monday at uh, at eight p.m. Yum. And uh, it is the Conway Whitman Show. Stay tuned for Gretchen in the Loops. It's an all new episode, huh? The Loops is off the road. Something special, <laughs> man.